The Highland Rams are 11-0 in 1998 and have won 23 straight games since the loss to Centennial in the 1996 title game. In fact, under head coach Brent Cutter, Highland is 46-1. Last Friday, Ryan Kemp scored four touchdowns as the Rams beat Twin Falls 51-26 in the A1 Division I semifinal. Can anybody derail this juggernaut? Well, the Skyline Grizzlies of Idaho Falls will give it a try. Skyline is 9-2 and, and behind Taylor Lugo's 212 rushing yards, not to mention a 67-yard punt return. The Grizzlies beat Centennial 34-21 in the other semifinal. Indeed, Skyline would like to atone for a 17-10 loss to the Rams earlier this year. It's Highland against Skyline for the A1 Division I Championship. Melt Bowl 98 is next. Welcome, everybody, to Hold Arena in Pocatello, Idaho, and Milk Bowl 98. Tonight, the A1 Division I Championship game. The 11-0 Highland Rams against the 9-2 Skyline Grizzlies. Some consider them the two best high school football teams in the state. Hi, everybody. Wayne DeZubak, along with former NFL linebacker Larry Pulowski, and welcome to Pocatello, Idaho. Boy, this, has, uh, this matchup here could be a great one, Larry. Well, you know, Wayne, we've talked about it all week, that these two teams really could be the two best teams in the state, and we think that it's going to be a great matchup tonight. Power on power, mano on mano. It's going to be an excellent ball game and a line of scrimmage game to beat all. Oh, and you talk about dynasties. Hey, Highland has won 23 games in a row. They are 46-1 and one under Brent Cutter. You know, they've only really had two tough games this year. Capital took them 13-6 down to the wire. And they also, this Skyline team gave them a heck of a ball game, 17-10 to 10 earlier in the season. So I look for that same kind of game. There are a couple of running backs. Ryan Kemp for Highland. He had a a lot of rushing yards last week, as did Taylor Lugo, 212 yards rushing for Skyline in an impressive win over Centennial. 30. Searching the rosters for guys that might play after high school, and we look at Taylor Lugo, and that's certainly a ball player, great athlete, power runner. He can do it all, but Kemp certainly is a powerful running back and has a lot of attributes that really look like Lugo's. Like I said, these guys are going to go tooth and nail. Should be a great crowd here tonight with both teams being from the eastern part of the state. Well, they did. The eastern part of Idaho got the uh, both ball clubs in tonight. There's people traveling from all over this side of the state to see this. And the game's going to be on statewide TV. What a great night for football. All right, sit back, relax. We're live at Holt Arena, and it's going to be the Highland Rams against the Skyline Grizzlies, the kickoff when we come back. Stay with us. And welcome back, everybody, to Hold Arena in Pocatello. Wayne DeZubak, along with Lori Pulowski, would like to introduce you now to our third member of our broadcast team, a former Big Sky linebacker, Jeff Gaze, will be working the sidelines tonight. Jeff? Wayne, thanks very much. First of all, pleasure to be with you and Larry Pulowski. We're going to have a great game down here. You can call Holt Arena the zoo. I got flying cows. I got grizzlies. I got rams. If that's not enough, I got Bengals on both sides of this arena looking over us. We're going to look for all the things happening on the sidelines. We'll talk to one of the coaches going in at the half and then bring you all the post-game stuff as well. You guys have a great game. I'm glad I'm here. All right, thank you, Jeff. We'll be listening for your comments. You got former Bronco down there, a bunch of whole mess of Bengals, huh? Yeah, this is a very dangerous place for uh, any former Broncos to dwell. <laughs> but, you know, when you're old geezers like Caves and I, it doesn't really matter a whole lot. Now, you yourself, a former Bengal, you're just right at home hey, here. Hey, I feel at home here. I mean, I was here watching him build this thing when it was the mini dome, and then I went to Holt Arena, named, of course, after former athletic director, W. Holt. And uh, they've been playing a lot of games in here. In fact, I was involved in the first game ever here when Idaho State beat the uh, University of Nevada, Las Vegas, 63 to 21, I believe it was. How's that for a memory? Because that was 103 years ago. Well, it probably was very close to that. But yeah, there's a lot of history in this building, and there's certainly been a lot of great high school games played in this building also, Wayne. And oh. we're gonna, I think we're going to see one of those tonight. I really believe so. I mean, these really, I think, are the two best teams there. You see that little ram there, that... Uh, Mascot looks like Darth Vader a little bit. <laughs> and you know, I see Star Wars is coming out with a whole new thing in May. New flick, new Star Wars flick. You know, a whole cow. new generation will be exposed to Darth Vader. All right, well, they introduced everybody here to a really good crowd here tonight. I mean, you've got Skyline up the road from Idaho Falls. 
island right here in Pocatello. And so, I mean, I think really there's more people from Idaho Falls here than Pocatello. And I think it's going to be nice, too, and I hope that we can put partisanship away for one night and our viewers in Boise in the Treasure Valley and also our viewers in Twin Falls over KMVT in the Magic Valley can just enjoy a very, very good football team between, Wayne, what you have to admit, are the two best teams in the state. No question. And, of course, you... United Dairymen of Idaho, of course, making all of this possible. There you see the road to uh, the Milk Bowl for the Highland Rams, Bo. Well, the road to the Milk Bowl has been really, as we said in the pregame, not too tough with the exception of the Capital game, which was a 13-6 game. Twin Falls gave them a little bit of a tussle there in Twin Falls. And then the Skyline game, the 17-10 game. But Highland has put up some big points all season long, 11-0, working on a 23-0 string. You know, their game with Twin Falls last week right here in Holt Arena was very tough. That final score, not indicative of how tough it was. Now, the Skyline Grizzlies tonight have won the toss as you look at their road to the Milk Bowl, and they have deferred to the second half. Well, their two losses coming to uh, Crosstown rival Hillcrest and then to this team they're going to play tonight. So a little revenge factor for Skyline tonight. But they, too, have put up some big points. And that last game right there that you see on... November 13th at Centennial. To be able to put up 34 points on Centennial in Meridian at the Centennial home field, that's very impressive, Wayne. Well, they really did. And Tyler Lugo that night had 212 yards rushing for the Skyline Grizzlies, and he also had a 67-yard return, punt return for a touchdown. So he is the real, real deal. Right now, let's go back down to the sideline. Jeff Caves, what do you got for us? You know, an interesting trend to watch is how many times will Taylor Lugo the ball for Skyline. I asked their coach Dave Guilford before the game. He said, I have no idea. That's not how we run our offense. The reads are made at the line of scrimmage. Whoever gets the ball, it's like the first time they heard about it. That'll be an interesting thing, I think, for us to watch, and I'm sure it'll be interesting for Taylor as well. Well, thanks, Jeff. You're right. I mean, that's kind of interesting when you come up. It's more than just reading and, and maybe auto bowling. They're coming up there, and be, based on what defense Highland gives them, they come up with a play. Well, Skyline plays a very unique style of offense in the, in the way that they set up. They run a little bit of the old wing tee. They run cross buck, where you see crossing backs in the backfield. They run some very, very old-style football, Wayne. Well, Blake Jones now getting ready to put a foot into it, get this thing underway here. A really nice crowd on hand. Kyle Kinghorn deep for the Highland Rams. Ryan Kemp also back there. And it's going to be Kinghorn taking it at the one-yard line. Kinghorn got a little bit of an alley, got up to the 21, maybe the 22-yard line before he was brought down on a nice hit by Curtis Andrus. Now the Highland Rams, 11-0. They've won 23 straight games. They haven't lost a game since the uh, championship game against Centennial in 1996. And they want another one here. This could be their coach, Brent Cutter's last game. And they want to win it for him. He's got a 46-1 record. They'd like to make it 47-1. Tanner Harris at quarterback will start throwing, but he's got some pressure, and he's going to fumble the football. They'll wait and see what happens. Looks like Highland got it back. Yeah, absolutely, Wayne. Highland did get that ball back. Harris comes out in the I formation, the first play, and they're going to drop back, run a little play action pass. There wasn't much of a fake there at the at the point of the uh, play action. I don't think that fooled anybody from Skyline, and the pressure's on, and he's carrying that ball like a loaf of bread, Wayne, you know, and uh, lost it, but still managed to gain a yard. Or lose a yard, excuse me. That's better than what the alternative was because he was in big trouble. So it's second down and 11. The pitch out, knocked away. It's on the ground, and Skyline may have it. Now nope, Highland comes up with it. Somehow it bounced out, and Ryan Kemp came up with it. The way Mitch landed that time for Skyline got up and knocked the pitch away from the pitch man. He caught it in midair. Watch off the corner here, number 23. Mitch Landon will just get enough of that ball to distract the tailback. And I don't know how Harris comes up with that ball, but I really I thought Todd Mortensen had it the first time, but obviously you see it bounces back out again, and Skyline gets it back. All right, now it is third and a mile and a half. Third and 24, the ball on the eight-yard line. And again, Tanner Harris dropping back, gets pressure. He's hit as he releases, and it flies away. And Tanner Harris is going to get up slow. 
Waney took a big pop that time. Bill Scobie coming in for this linebacker position. They're doing a little stunning of the line. And as you see, Scobie just came right in there, and as he threw it, he got hit. And that just floated away. So they'll have to punt it away from their own end zone. The Skyline Grizzlies really bringing everything on that first defensive set. Kick is away. Santa Lugo takes it at the 44. He's to the 40. Got a little bit of running room and then gets stripped up. He had one man he could have beat there. Didn't quite get around him. That was uh, Adam Goddard who got him down. Well, you... Wayne Lugo got tangled up in Stephen Miller's feet, number 47 for Skyline, and he would have picked up at least 10, maybe 15 more very easily. Watch here at the end of this play. He just trips over 47 as he's trying to make his cut. Yep. You see he's got a blocker in front of him, and he would have been... Uh, he might have had a chance to at least pick up 15 more. Well, Goddard was sitting there fighting off the block or trying to anyway, so they got lucky. Up the middle, the fullback. Not a whole lot there, but it's effective. That's Heath Bowen, 5'11", 200-pound senior. Jordan Hill for Highland finishes that tackle up. And really good control at the line of scrimmage by the Highland Rams. This is a very big offensive line for Skyline, Wayne. These guys, they have three guys in the 250 to 275 range. Jordan Sermon at quarterback, and that's a quick snap. This is the pitch out. It goes to uh, Tim Flint, and Highland played that pretty well. They really strung it out. Yeah, Jared Carlson came up from his defensive back position and did a very fine job in stringing the option out. Two ways to defend the option, Wayne. You either come and attack the quarterback immediately, or you try to string the thing out, let it go down the line of scrimmage. As we look at the offensive line, therefore the skyline team, very well played and a loss of a yard. It's going to be third down and nine now. Play comes in from the bench. They're going to have to get this play off quickly. A lot of play action fake. Wide open. That's Heath Bowen. Bowen has enough for the first down at the 22-yard line. Well, you just play action to everybody. And in fact, I think he was one of the guys they Watch faked that it to. Cross buck action we talked about. You see the backs cross in the backfield. Two different players potentially could get that ball, and then they'd run the third option, which is to throw it, and that very effective for Skyline. Well, Heath Bowen, a great weapon for the Skyline Grizzlies. All season long, everybody talks about Taylor Lugo, he's but a, Bowen is a good one. He's a great alternative to Lugo. Yep. Again, cross buck to the right this time. Wide open, but overthrown, and there is a flag down. Chris Rose had beaten his man. He had beaten Jared Carlson, but there is a flag down. We'll check it out. I tell you, Wayne, that skyline back, there's more action back there than a Las Vegas casino. Incredible. <laughs> the guy's going three different directions, and the quarterback coming out again with the play-action pass. Let's see what the flag is. That's a lot of action. It's going to be a procedure penalty against skyline. And a little illegal motion. Imagine that. We talked about all the action in the backfield. Well, not all of it was legal. The guy moved right at the snap, before the snap. The wide guy. There you go. Illegal shift. Fire. Decline. Second down. All right, the official having a little trouble with that microphone there. He, he forgot he had it on. He was telling the coach. He says, this is the wide guy. Wide guy move. All right, it's going to be second down and 10 as they decline the incomplete pass. Boy, they run up to that line of scrimmage, don't they? Looking over the middle. Wide open touchdown. That is Nick Adamson. Well, Nick Adamson, not big, but he made a big play right there. Well, he made an excellent catch, and again, Wayne, that play action in the backfield is so confusing for defensive backs, and especially these high school kids, as the extra point is added by Blake Jones to make it 7-0, but that's a, almost an impossible task for those defensive backs to try to stay with all that motion and cross action in the backfield. 8.34 and a clock, first period. Skyline is struck first. It's the Skyline Grizzlies 7, and the Highland Rams nothing on this great pass here to Nick Adamson for the score. And you see, he just takes it down the middle, and the cornerbacks and safeties get a little caught up with that action in the backfield, and you really have to... You really have to feel sorry for these defensive backs of Highland. What the Highland Rams saw was a blitzing, stunning, coming at you in your face, pin our ears back defense from the Grizzlies. Skyline's been on a mission the last five or six weeks. They have steadily got better and better and better. 
and I talked to Steve Vogel, the head coach of Capitol High, this past week. They lost 49 to nothing last weekend to Skyline. He had nothing but good things to say. Takes a big hop there, kind of a shortstop hop. Ryan Kemp has it, tries the left side, got an alley. And he's still on his feet. Out to the 36-yard line. Nice return by Ryan Kemp. Well, Kemp shows you a little bit of that shiftiness that has made him a very feared man in that Highland backfield. He didn't touch the ball on the first series. Let's see if maybe that kickoff return will get him sparked a little bit in the second series. And a Highland went right to the pass. On first down, they tried to throw. Tanner Harris went back, and that kind of put him in behind the eight ball for the whole series. And like I say, Ryan Kemp is a guy who's got 22 touchdowns this year, scored four touchdowns in their game last week against Twin Falls. So it's first down and 10 from the 36, and they do go to Kemp. Kemp gets a couple of, and that's about it. Mitch Landon up on the tackle, 23 for Skyline. A play that looked like Wayne had had a very good chance of uh, gaining some big yardage at the line of scrimmage. Watch your Highland kind of splits that defensive line, but great reaction by the linebackers and especially Mitch Landon to get up there and make that tackle. Well, already on that play, pole, you see really the kind of quickness that Ryan Kemp has. He's got some quick feet, and when he gets to that line of scrimmage, he gets a little hole. He'll pick up a lot of yardage, but the Skyline defense is just so quick right now. Three wide receivers set. Looking left, and the pass is complete. Short of the first down, Jordan Hill with a nice reception. Nice delivery there by Tanner Harris. Little quick out route there by Jordan Hill for the Highland Rams. This is the kind of pass that'll get your passing game going. They came out in the first series, tried a five-step, seven-step drop, and that didn't work because the pressure was too much. Go to the short three-step drop and pick up a little bit of yardage. Brings up third and two. Well, when you got a defense coming as much as the Grizzlies are coming, you got to go to those short steps and hit them quick. But they got a big third down play now here. Third and two from the 43-yard line. 7-0, Grizzlies lead it. First quarter. And we got some movement or something going on. The defense was shifting there, but it could be too much time. We'll wait and see. I think there's some kind of a shift that maybe in an encroachment, but we'll wait and see. Yeah, somehow I think when they shifted, you could see that they almost tripped over the line of scrimmage and made contact. Prior to the snap, encroachment. On the defense, first down. Well, that's the easy way. Offenses love to pick up first downs, Wayne. You just let that yellow hanky do the work for you. Well, I'll tell you what, if you're Dave Guilford, you're sitting back there going, come on, guys. I want you to be excited, but just hold it for a minute, you know. We got them in a third and two. Let's make them earn it. Well, this has been a very spirited defense in the both series. They've been out on the field, and it's kind of hard to tell them to calm down and take a breath. It is. You almost don't want to. All right, first down and 10, ball at the 48. The pitch out goes to Ryan Kemp. Kemp's into skyline territory for the first time tonight. And even with the great pursuit there by Skyline, Wayne, and a play that looked like it wasn't going to get even back to the line of scrimmage, the shiftiness of Kemp in the backfield and the ability to kind of slither his way through defenders looks like he's going to be stopped right here at the line and just keeps working his way past two defenders for a five-yard pickup. Kind of gives guys shoulders and hips and... You never really see the whole the whole deal. One of those little shifty guys that uh, you hate to see coming at you because you don't know which way he's going. In the eye now, Klinghorn, the eye back, has it. And he is stopped. Nice little play there that time by uh, Todd Mortensen. Well, good reaction overall by the Skyline defense. No hole at all. Highland tries a little bit of a power play right up the middle with a fullback leading. And the linebacker coming off the corner makes a great play, and that's uh, hard to get going when you don't have your feet under you. All right, another third down, just like that. This one's a third down and four, though. Two wide receivers to the near side. And Harris getting pressure up the middle, and that's incomplete. Under through it, and a thank you from the pressure I'll tell you, when you come like that, Curtis Andrus coming right in on Harris, and you got to believe he saw him coming and hurried the throw. Well, you can be assured that Harris saw him coming <laughs> because he got rid of the ball just in time. But that Curtis Andrus freight train coming up the middle was very frightening. Skyline's not very respective of the passing game of Highland right now, Wayne. They're bringing up eight and even nine men front on that play right there. Well, so far it has been the Skyline Grizzlies controlling this ball game. We got 6.30 to go in the first quarter, 7-0 skyline. Taylor Lugo will take it at about the 6. And Lugo up the sideline. Not going to get a whole lot more. 
David Lugo, he's six foot, 190 pounds. He's a senior, and I tell you, when we were down on the field before the game, we both looked at each other and said, he's the real deal. Yeah, very powerful legs. Uh, he really does, you have to get down on the field to realize just how big that kid is. I mean, he's a very strong looking young man, uh, but a very, very powerful set of legs. Let's go down to Jeff Cage, Jeff. I was watching the Highland defense to see how they rallied Wayne, and after Jared Carlson had gotten beat on that touchdown, the uh, big motivation now is we win together, we lose together, and the guy carrying the message was a senior linebacker, so let's keep an eye on Coulter Ellis and see how he performs on this series. Well, that time they go to a guy, thank you, Jeff, that time they go to a guy named Greg Beard, running back, tight end, so when he's a running back slash tight end, you know he's got some size. Now that's another guy you don't want to see coming at you as a defense, Wayne. Those uh, running back slash tight ends uh, usually doesn't mean anything other than they run straight very well. You bet. Well, he's 6'1", 180, so not a huge guy, but as high school kids go, not bad. Sermon looking, thrown down the sideline. Incomplete. Nearly a great grab that time by Tim Flint. Flint went up over the defender, almost came down with it. Well, a good coverage there. Tommy Stoddard in coverage along with Jared Carlson and they try the fade route again play action pass tailback kind of misses his block there but great coverage down the sideline on the fade route by Stoddard he had that one uh, well well covered well there's one of those plays where you read it at the line of scrimmage they saw one on one coverage and figured hey we can beat this guy let's do it timeout call skyline calling a timeout with 538 to go here in the first quarter in the Grizzlies all right, here we go. Third down. Three yards to go. Ball at the 23-yard line of the Grizz. They come up from the line of scrimmage. And right up the middle, they go to Taylor Lugo. He is going to be close. I don't think he got it, though. He needed to get to the 32. They're marking it for 30 and a half. Now, again, uh, Coach Guilford understands. You just can't make a mistake this early in the game. They've got the 7-0 lead. There's no reason to have a big, uh, risky play down here that could be intercepted or run an option that could be fumbled. So they'll just try it up the middle with Lugo. They didn't get it. Now they'll punt it. Now, actually, it's at the 26 yard line. You know, I'm looking up there. They got it on the 31. Even the other guys got it all messed up. That's their first of the half. All right, so Highland now takes timeout. Fourth down and one. Skyline came out, almost looked like they're going to go for it. Just to set you up, the ball is actually at the 25 and a half yard line. All right, they needed about three yards on that dive that they gave to Lugo. They only picked up maybe a yard and a half. They've got a real, at least a yard, probably a yard and a half to get that first down. I don't think you're going to see Coach Guilford go for that at this point in time on his own 25, 26-yard line. You know, it's funny. The scoreboard still says fourth down, one to go, ball on the 31. That's what threw me. I looked up there. Could be a set of eyeglasses, potentially, for the guy at the scoreboard. There you go. <laughs> I can recommend some very good optometrists <laughs> if he would like uh, reference. I'm more than happy to do that. All right, quarterback Jordan Sermon back there. He's also the punter. Island with the return on. Nice kick. Ryan Kemp sent all the way back. Call for a fair catch at about the 35. Let's see where they mark it. A mark it at the 34-yard line. So the Rams wanted to get a return on there, and Sermon got a nice punt off. Yeah, a 40-yarder. You'll take that any day of the week. Sermon certainly has uh, got a real strong leg, and uh, that ball you know, really almost looked like a college kick, Wayne. At very good height, nice spiral, turned over at the top, and uh, Ryan Kemp, no chance but to fair catch it. Well, the one thing about the Highland Rams, you know, they're down 7 nothing. They don't panic. They've won 23 in a row. They've been here before. They knew this was going to be a tough game coming in. They just feel if they can hang in there that they can wear Skyline down. We'll see. Kemp up the middle. Give him maybe three. And, Wayne, that 23 game winning streak breeds a lot of confidence in a football team i'm not uh, sure you ever think you're going to lose when you win that many games in a row you just know that something's going to happen good for you and highland will keep plugging away at it well they've won 46 of the last 47 games i mean that's amazing to me i don't think i can ever recall a high school team or any college team or anything on that level you know nebraska of course won a lot but i'm talking you talk just basic high school football teams that just doesn't happen Second down now, six to go. Harris, again, the pressure, and he is sacked. They brought it from both sides. Todd Mortensen, again, we've talked about him all night long already. 
Well, Mortensen was the first one there, and Mitch Landon the second one there. Coming from the outside, both corners, they came off of the ends. Nobody there to block him, and Harris has no opportunity to do anything except try to run for his life and keep the ball in his hands. He had a little trouble with that first play of the game with a fumble, so very cognizant of holding on to the football right now. I think you said it well a moment ago that uh, Skyline, no respect right now for the Highland passing game. Three minutes and 35 seconds to go. First quarter, 7-0 Grizzlies. Third down and 13 for the Highland Rams. Harris going deep. Has a man open. Incidental contact. No, now the flag comes from the other official. The ball was intended for Griffin Proctor. There was contact. The official nearest the play did not call it. The official furthest away threw his flag. We'll see. They're going to talk it over. It's offensive interference. The way that's kind of interesting, but if you can't have defensive interference on an overthrown ball, how can you have offensive interference on an overthrown ball? Well, Something to ponder. <laughs> We're going to see it right here. Don't make me ponder tonight, okay? <laughs> I'm not in a... Pass interference. On the offense, the loss of down, fourth down. All right, well, that'll, that'll bring your punt team out as quick as anything. Well, there you go. You lose the field position again because of the call. You watch it. I don't know if you'll see them tangle up because they tangle up right about now. Well, I think the side okay, judge that you could see running down the field, he's not going to make any call because the ball's way overthrown. I mean, it's five, six yards over his head. Yeah, it's but not the catchable. back judge made the call. Here comes the Grizzlies with the pressure, and they almost get it blocked. Lugo takes it at the 45. He comes around the right side looking for an alley. He's at midfield. He's got a lane. He's at the 30. One man to beat. Wow. Taylor Lugo with the punt return. He caught it all the way on the left side of the field, Wayne, and took it around and finally got to his wall. A great job there of Skyline not clipping. Another good job here by Skyline not clipping. And finally he gets to the wall, and then his blockers take over, and the big guy is rumbling down the sidelines. Takes it all the way down to the five-yard lines and was knocked out of bounds by the quarterback, Landon Harris. Well, so much for field position. Here come the Grizzlies again. Lugo. Well, he had some company in the backfield, didn't he? He had some great penetration that time. Coulter Ellis was the first guy through number 24. Also Adam Smith, number 68, in from his defensive line spot, got in there and, and got low and took some legs out. And once you create a pile in that backfield, Wayne, there's really not a whole lot that can happen offensively. Well, second and goal now, but instead of being at the five, the ball's back at the seven, almost eight yard line. Sermon looking in the end zone, knocked up in the air. Lugo, can he handle it? He does. Well, you see great concentration by Taylor Lugo. Knocked it up in the air, came down with it, 13-0. A pretty solid coverage here by Highland with Jason Hawks and also Jordan Hill on the coverage. And they actually got a hand on the ball, knocked it up in the air, but Lugo with great concentration, as you said, Wayno. And Blake, Blake Jones makes it 14 to nothing skyline. And a lot of people over here in this part of the state saw this coming. But I'll tell you what, the Highland Rams didn't see it coming. Well, as I talked to uh, two of the semifinalist coaches last week, I talked to Mark Shaw, the head coach at Twin Falls High. And I talked to Steve Vogel from Capitol High. And I tried to get their assessment on this game. Skyline kicking off. Blake Jones gets a foot into it at this time. Klinghorn takes it about three yards deep, and it's an automatic touchback. Now, once you break the plane of the goal line, that automatically brings it out to the 20, and that's not something you see a whole lot in high school football right now. I think most of the soccer players are playing soccer, and it seems like <laughs> the kickers have suffered for that, although we do see uh, some great kicking here today by, by Skyline especially. Well, we talked about Highland not panicking, but probably they've got their attention focused now on the Grizzlies. Down 14 to nothing with 2.31 to go here in the first quarter. Let's see what they do. They hand it off to Ryan Kemp, and he runs into his own man. 
Pretty much, yeah, he had nowhere to go, Poe, because uh, Parker Kemp was right there. No, it's pretty much total dominance of the line of scrimmage right now by Skyline on both sides of the football, Wayne, and certainly this defensive front and linebacker crew and even strong safety because they are playing eight- and nine-man fronts. They they're, have total disregard for the passing game of Highland right now. All right, a challenge for the Highland Rams early here in Pocatello. Remember, this is Highland's home field. This is where they play all their football games. Skyline said that game, uh, here comes the blitz again. All out blitz. Wow. <laughs> well, Lee Loader, number 65 for Skyline, credited with the sack there. But you could credit the hurry to about four or five different guys. Landon Harris has no chance back there, Wayne. I mean, he has got absolutely no time to do anything on that drop back. Is that unbelievable or not? Watch. I mean, everybody came. They're stunning inside, outside. You see the stunts there. And when you miss one guy, there's another guy in your face. Well, and Andrew Mullen came first. He was number 88 that forced Landon to duck away. And then Harris was, was smothered by Loader. So there was really no chance at all to even get the play set. I mean, they're, they're getting back to Harris' spot as fast as he is. Here they come again. This time, some time to throw. Harris, deep. Good coverage on the play. Pass was intended for T.J. Acri. And Lugo going both ways. Playing a little corner back there also. Kind of Lugo kind of reminds me of another guy we used to watch here years and years ago. Remember uh, the name Merrill Hodge? Oh, yeah. I don't think that guy ever came off the football field. And Taylor Lugo is a very similar kind of a player to Merrill Hodge. All right, fourth down and 12 now for the Rams at their own 18-yard line. Again, they're going to have to punt from their own territory, deep. And again, they got to punt it to Lugo. Takes it on the run at the 40. And again, looking for a wall. He's got one or two men to beat. This guy is dangerous. Wow. Wayne, there's a flag down on the other side of the field at the 40-yard line. I believe we're going to see a clip on Skyline. And it wasn't a very malicious clip, but it certainly was a block in the back. And a lot of that sometimes can be caused by the fact that Taylor Lugo, I mean, he doesn't even know which way he's going. Now, again, they kicked the ball to the far side of the field, tried to bring it all the way back to the wall on the left side of the field. Lugo tried to get to the wall, but it wouldn't have mattered anyway as there was a clip really at the point where Lugo caught the ball at the 40-yard line. Remember a game many, many years ago when I was playing ball. After this. On the return, clipping. On the return team, first down. And, and, and what we had, he had a return left on, just like they did this time, the Skyline Grizzlies, and Lugo tried to get there. They had a return left on, had kind of a semi-wall set up. They kicked the dart team one time, many, many moons ago. The guy caught it, and he saw that everybody couldn't get there, so he went to the right, and he got tackles. First time I've ever seen anybody tackled by 11 guys. <laughs> well, when you don't get to the wall, that might happen on a punt. <laughs> so Lugo did the right thing, even though there was a clip. He's got the ball now. And he draws a crowd, talking about 11 guys. Not 11, but maybe five. Jared Daniels making a great tackle on Lugo. He got his feet set. He got his body squared up. Watch number 49 in black. He'll get to the line of scrimmage, take on a blocker, square up, put the shoulder in. And look at Pretty him, nice tackle. Look at him swarm into the ball. That's what you want to see if you're a defensive coach. It's going to get some life in this team. Up the middle. Just kind of pounding it out now. Not a whole lot there. A little quick hitter right up the middle by Heath Bowen. And again, Bowen can make some of his own holes at 5'11", 200 pounds. A little bit of a fire plug of a running back. Well, that brings us to the end of the first quarter of play. And it has been all Skyline Grizzlies. We have played a period here in Hold Arena, Pocatello, and our score. Skyline Grizzlies 14 and the Highland Rams nothing. And welcome back to Hold Arena, everybody, in Pocatello, Idaho. Wayne DeZubak, Larry Pulowski, Jeff Caves down on the sidelines. The Skyline Grizzlies with the ball at the 30 and a 14-0 lead in this ball game. And right off the get-go, they go to Taylor Lugo. Sermon hits Taylor Lugo right on the three, and it's a first down. Ben Harris with the coverage and the tackle for Highland. That's a little bit of a mismatch there, Wayne, when you're talking about a 5'9", 160 DB trying to bring down the load that is Taylor Lugo at six foot 190. This ball drilled right between two defenders, three defenders actually. And then the little guy, Harris, hangs on. First down. 
Handoff to the big fullback. He's got some running room. He's still going. Yeah. What a nice play that time by the fullback, Heath Bowen. Heath Bowen with another first down as the Skyline Grizzlies just come out smoking. They've been doing this all game long. Well, the tackling by Highland on that play was not exemplary, but again, we go back to the fact that 5'11", 200 pounds, that's a bowling ball coming through the middle, and it's hard to get hold of a bowling ball, Wayne. Ball at the 39-yard line of the Rams. Play action fake. Jordan Sermon gets crunched. Maybe got a yard. Trying the option there that time. And well, Coulter Ellis that time for Highland. Little guy making a big play. Again, the play action fake in the backfield. And when you run that big fullback up the middle, you try it again. But watch the, watch the little guy Ellis come in there and get a hold of some legs. Get some help that time also by Jordan Hill. Inside handoff that time going to Lugo. Trying something different. Lugo, nothing there really. Maybe a yard. I'm not even sure what they call this play anymore, Wayne. Oh, back, you know, when, when we didn't have gray hair, I guess it was the cross buck, a flanker trap, a cross, cross action, many, many different names for it. Well, the misdirection part of it is what really gets the defense all goofed up. They, they think it's going one way and it goes the other way, and it's really tough to handle. Sermon looking for the first down. Throws complete to Bowen. You know, Bowen didn't seem like he was the intended receiver. I really thought the intended receiver was Chris Rose, who was sitting there waiting for it, and all of a sudden Bowen came in. By the way, there's a flag down in the backfield. In a place you would probably think holding will be called. Again, the play-action pass. Good job by the backfield, Taylor Lugo, of getting the block. And, of, of course, as soon as I say it's on the offense, it's called on the defense. <laughs> well, you were right, though. It was in a place they normally call holding. They also call roughing the passer back there, too. That's what it was. And they're going to tack it on at the end of the play. Personal foul, roughing the passer on the defense. Tack on foul, first down. Well, well that would be about two of the only things they call in that position, yes. But boy. a very unnecessary play by Island, and maybe a little bit of frustration starting to come out early in the second quarter, Wayne. Fischel forgot to pick up his flag. It's still back there at the 42. Well, we don't have to worry about a penalty from him. <laughs> <laughs> pass out the Lugo you know the guy can run and the guy can catch Wayne very very agile move there to gather that ball in by Taylor Lugo and, I, and a great throw too Jordan Sermon is really delivering the ball where his receivers can catch it tonight he's hot and they're giving him a little time you see all the time he has and then puts it right on the money nice that's a, catch that's a tough catch for a running back they've got the big shoulder pads on He's got to reach back around, turn his whole upper body around to make that catch. That's just a very athletic move, and I, I'm, I'm in this kid's corner all the way, boy. I, I think this guy's going to be playing a lot of ball after this season's over in college. Second down and six. Bowen. Heath Bowen. All the way down to about the one-yard line, it looks like. That'll be first and goal. So they'll get four shots from about the two. And with Bowen and Lugo in that backfield, Wayne, you've got to believe that three out of those four shots anyway are going to be one of those two touching the ball. I'll tell you what, you know, they go up 21-0 here. Highland's in big, big trouble. If any team could come back from a 21-0 deficit, it's the Rams. Handoff up the middle. Good rally to the football there by Highland. They had a great line charge that time. Their D-line got off the ball, got into those big bodies up front. And by big bodies, I'm talking about guys like Todd Valentine at 5'10", 205. I'm talking about Frank McClure at 6'1", 275. Wayne, that's a big offensive line. 275 pounds. He hasn't passed too many McDonald's or Burger Kings, has he? <laughs> Not without stopping. No. Bowen in for the touchdown. Looks like it. It is. Heath Bowen just pulls his way in, and it's 20 nothing skyline. Well, why would you do anything else at that point? You've had so much success with Bowen up the middle. Taylor Lugo in that first quarter really didn't have a whole lot of rushing attempts or a lot of yardage. But Heath Bowen did, and Heath Bowen's been the uh, star of the second quarter so far. Blake Jones... 
Gets it through somehow. It wasn't pretty, but it gets through. It's 21 0. Skyline leads it. Let's go down to our sideline man, Jeff Cage. Jeff. 12 seconds to go in the second quarter. Sermon, the QB for Skyline, 6 of 8 for 67 yards and two touchdown passes. And Bowen, the big fullback, six rushes for 22 yards and that TD right there. Like you said, he's been a big weapon tonight. All right, here we go again. It's Blake Jones with a foot into it and Klinghorn back into the end zone. Bring it out to the 20. That's a heck of a weapon. It, you know, if you can guarantee that your offense is going to have to start from the 20-yard line every time and your defense is going to have 80 yards to play with every time, that's a real weapon, Wayne. Well, if you can kick like that, time in and time out, I guarantee you, you got a scholarship waiting for you someplace. Yeah, and we haven't had an opportunity to see his field goal prowess. <laughs> being that Skyline just keeps sticking it in the end zone. All right, here we go. The Rams down 21-0 with 9-12 to go in the first half. Here in Pocatello, Tanner Harris has not had time to do anything, and he is back again. This time a little more time. Throws over the middle, wide open, and that is uh, Griffin Proctor, and he's got a first down to the 39-yard line. Oh, Wayne, you hit the key to the whole play right there. Tanner Harris finally has time to throw the football. It looks like the offensive line coach for Highland had a serious conversation with that O-line. Said, listen guys, they're killing our quarterback. Give him some time to throw the ball. An excellent time there. But the other thing you'll see too, the pressure was not there from Skyline because they didn't blitz that time. It was only a four-man rush. That's one of the few times we've seen that in the first half. And here comes the blitz. First down out the 39-yard line. They're going to roll Harris out, and on the roll, hits Proctor again. And he's close to another first down, out at the 49-yard line. But you saw what they did. They knew the blitz was coming. And so they said to Tanner Harris, fine, have a moving pocket. Get out there on the right-hand side. Excellent roll out there. He brings both of his backs to protect for him. And again, he finds Proctor in the flat that time for a first down. But you're right, the rollout action certainly is the key there. Ran right away from that blitz. So Griffin Proctor and Tanner Harris have teamed up twice in a row now, and both have worked for first downs. And so the Rams have it at the 49-yard line, first and 10. You stand in that pocket long enough and get hit enough times, you're going to say, Coach, let's try something different, okay? Try a rollout. There he goes, rolling left this time. Harris, again, to Proctor. And he's got another first down, three for three, these two are. Well, this looks like a totally different offense than we've seen so far in this first half for Highland. Again, the O-line doing the job up front, a rollout action giving Harris time to throw the ball, and now he's delivering it right on the money. You know, when you've got guys in your face all the time, Wayne, you can't throw the ball very effectively, and he and number seven are on the same wavelength right now for three in a row. They really are. They're moving it right down the field. The Rams need to get a score here to get back in this ball game, get their confidence to a level that was before this game began. The handoff, Ryan Kemp. Kemp's got a hole. And he rips off about six yards inside the 25 to the 24 and a half. Yeah, that's when Ryan Kemp can become effective when your passing game has worked and then you go ahead and hand off to him. Sure, well, we, we discussed it, that Skyline had really disregarded the passing game of Highland for most of the first quarter. When you get that much pressure on the quarterback and he doesn't have time to throw the ball, the running game is not going to be very effective either because you're not controlling the line of scrimmage. Second down and six. Here comes the blitz. Tanner Harris felt it. He did not get back to the line of scrimmage. He'll lose the yard and a half. He's at the 25. They're going to mark it all the way back to the 26, a loss of three. You know, you see the result there is a very positive play for Skyline, which it was in almost a two-yard loss. But it could have been about a 10-yard loss Highland's offensive line and backs picked up that blitz, Wayne, so that they didn't have the eight men coming at him that Harris saw normally in the first quarter. He only, he only saw seven coming that time, and they actually picked up the blitz. So a, still a loss of two. Could have been much worse. The way things have been going tonight, a good play. All right, third down. Eight yards to go. Ball at the 26-yard line. The Rams need to get something on the board. Harris, complete. Nice catch by D.J. Akery. D.J. Akery that time, Wayne, runs a 15-yard square out. That's a difficult pass to complete in high school, but Tanner Harris got just enough time to be able to set up and throw that ball because, again, Skyline came with a blitz and rushed the two outside guys. But, again, Highline 
Highland picked it up and gave him enough time to get that ball out there. Really get the feeling, Poe, that the Rams have the sense of how important this drive is for them to complete it, to finish it off. You certainly need to get that goose egg off the board one way or the other. 21-0. Skyline Grizzlies lead if you just joined us. 6.50 to go, and the ball's on the turf. Highland will recover the football. Heads up play by Parker Kemp. But now they got their way back to the 27-yard line. Mitch Land in number 23 coming like a freight train again. That's the second time we've seen that play. Just comes up the middle untouched. No backs there to protect him. Again, the deep drop hurting the Highland Rams. The sprint outs have been good. The three-step drops have been good. The five and seven step drops, Wayne, you might as well take it out of the playbook now because they can't block it. Well, you know, when Mitch Landon came in there that time, I mean, really, Tanner Harris didn't even have time to hand it off. Somebody's got a block up front. The Rams aren't getting that right now, and they got second down and 24, and more trouble with flags flying everywhere. That'll be a procedure call on Highland. Snap count uh, not really understood by anybody on that play. Landon Harris snap. right now, Wayne. Ball start on the offense. Still second down. Landon Harris is 5 for 5 on this drive for 61 yards, but that really doesn't count the two times that he's been pressured, fumbled, sacked. Well, I'll tell you really what. Really 5 of 7. He saw on the replay that Tanner Harris really wasn't ready for the ball, so the center, either the center knew what he was doing or Tanner didn't. Yeah, there was a mix-up there. The center knew what he was doing or the other 10 guys didn't. What do you think? Mm. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm open for suggestions. <laughs> well, let's suggest this. They got a second down and 29. <laughs> bummer yeah <laughs> here comes the blitz again picked up nicely though harris with the time wide open and complete to jordan hill now that is not nearly enough for the first down but man does that set up a third makeable third down i'll well, make it fourth down i guess that was a third down play wasn't it no well, it wasn't. this is third down now so it that's what up i thought 19 yards of the 29 that they needed to get, that's a very, very uh, nice play and, and a very big morale booster for this Highland Rams offense. I mean, they need something to get them going. They're now inside the 15-yard line again. Third down, big play here. They can still get a first without scoring. All right, third down and 11. They've got to get it down to the three-yard line for a first down. Harris, straight drop back. Over the middle. Complete. Not enough for the first down. A nice catch by Griffin Proctor, but it'll be fourth down. Now it's decision time. You're down by 21 points. Do you even remotely think about kicking a field goal? When you're down by 21, I think you got to go for the seven. If you get it, huge morale booster for Highland. If you don't get it, Skyline will come screaming off that field like a bunch of wild men. All right. While we were talking, Harris was over at the sideline getting the play. Here it comes, fourth down and four. Need to get to the three-yard line for a first down. But what they really need to do is get into the end zone. They tried to call him offside. And what? they did. <laughs> it was a hard snap count. Everybody in the place was going bonkers. And Skyline jumped offside. And on a fourth and four, they get a gimme. They were coming with the jailbreak from Sing Sing. Jailbreak from Sing Sing being you send eight or nine guys, and it's an all-out blitz, and everybody wanted to get there first. Trouble was, two or three of them jumped over the line of scrimmage. Prior to the snap, encroachment. On the defense, half the distance to the goal line, it'll be fourth down. Well, it's still fourth down, so they don't get a first down because of a half the distance to the goal line. I forgot about that puppy. Well, I thought it was half the distance, but I thought that would have been given it to him, but obviously not. It's more than just a few inches. That's a little easier play to convert than that fourth and fourth. Now they'll go for it for real. We haven't seen much of a running game out of Highland, but I, if we were going to see one, this might be an opportune place to do it. Uh, you got to believe Ryan Kemp's the man. They come out in a triple set, man, I tell you. Haven't seen three backs in a long time. Klinghorn, down to the goal line. Do they give it to him? No, he's at the one-inch line. Well, I think that's a good spot by the officiating crew. As he was churning for yardage, as you watch the handoff here, that triple back set allows two backs to lead through. Kinghorn comes through and sees down right there. Great call. Very, very nice spot by this officiating crew. 
and a T formation. I haven't seen that since I was playing ball. And we've seen a lot of odd <laughs> ball formations, haven't we? You know, in this day and age of four wide receivers, it seems like everybody's doing it, and everybody runs with the single back set as we get a timeout here by Skyline. That leaves them one left in the half. Sacked and hit for a fumble one time, so really seven of nine, but in actual pass attempts, seven of seven. All right, here we go. First and goal to go from the one-foot line for the Highland Rams. All oh, the old quarterback sneak with Tanner Harris. I mean, he's in about a foot now, and they finally give the signal. <laughs> well, I figure he was in because everybody was in the end zone. Yeah. It's a pretty good indication, but until the referee sees the ball in the end zone, he really can't make the call. So the goose egg is gone, and the Highland Rams have a very impressive drive. Like you say, Tanner Harris going through the air, throwing the ball. And his big uh, target that time on that drive was Griffin Proctor, who caught at least three passes that I can recall. Here comes Ryan Kemp on to try the extra point. Well, he's got a leg. He puts it up and good. Yeah, in fact, Wayne Proctor on that drive was four, had four receptions for 57 yards, so he was definitely the man of the hour on that drive. But the key, again, goes back to the offensive line giving Harris some time to throw the ball. Here's the dive play, the quarterback sneak into the end zone. And it, the, such a pile of humanity there that, you know, if you look, there's nobody really behind the goal line, so I assume that he's in, but until the referee sees the ball in the hands of a Highland Ram, he can't call it a touchdown. Well, the Rams did what they had to do. They drove down the field, they scored, and now it's 21-7 with 4.07 to go here in the first half. Grizzlies have really looked impressive here tonight. The Highland Rams finally came to life on that drive, and... You know, it's so important to get some momentum going, especially as the, the first half winds down. I mean, you've got to get on the scoreboard. And now, I'm sure over on the other side, Poe, what they're saying is we've got to make a defensive stand here, get the ball back, and get some more points on the board, and then we'll be just fine. Yeah, that's exactly what they're saying, Wayne. And they're also saying, okay, we've got that zero off the scoreboard. You eliminate that goose egg, it just gets everybody motivated a little bit. And that was a key drive for them. Very nice protection by the lineman very nice connections between harris and proctor and a very good drive but the key as you said when can this defense stop the juggernaut that they've seen coming at them all day long there we go ryan kept now will kick it off his first kickoff of the night and he's got a leg too he sends uh, landon right back to the goal line he'll take it right at the goal line and that's it He's up to the 12-yard line, and he was speared by Jared Carlson. And not speared in the sense of an illegal hit, but you're right, Wayne, speared in the sense that when he was hit, he went down in a hurry. Watch the impact here. As Landon brings the ball back, there's a form tackle for you. Well, I tell you, he just had great extension through the legs. Drove right through Mitch Landon. That's the second time we've seen real nice form from the tacklers here. Chris Frost has this defense in very good fundamental shape. Let's see if they can make some big plays and stop Skyline. Not much there. Again, the Highland Ram defense now, like we said, really showing some emotion. Taylor Lugo gets one yard is all to be second out and nine. The ball just outside the 15-yard line. Lugo just kind of... Moves that pile along a little bit. Bowen does the same thing when he gets the ball. A couple of very powerful guys back there to be able to hand off to. A lot of play action faking going there. The throw, incomplete. First, it's almost picked off by Jared Carlson. And then the ball hit Justin Franson right in the hands. Bounced out, but I'm sure he saw Carlson going by him and probably screened him from the ball. What a nifty move here by Sermon. Watch this little move right here to get out of the way of the on-rushing defender, Jared Daniels from Highline. Highland, and then he delivers the pass. He was definitely screened on that play. Yeah, but it was a great throw. I mean, it was right on the target, like you said, almost a couple of great plays, almost a great interception, almost a great catch. Two great teams playing here tonight in this ball game, and it's third down and eight. And Sermon again, looking, pulls it back in. Now he's in trouble. And he is brought down by Tommy Stoddard. You know, we've talked about what a great game Lugo's been having, too. And he had a 
hasn't had the ball many times, but he's had it five times now, and he hasn't really gained any yards. It's zero yards from the line of scrimmage, so all his damage coming on the receiving end and on those punt returns. Now well, Sermon got one chance that time, and he didn't take it. He pulled it back in, and as a result, paid the price, and it's fourth down and 15. Well, Stoddard had a good job keeping contained there and making sure that he didn't let that quarterback outside of him. Sermon gets a nice bounce with Lion Cap right in a position to pick it up on a one hop and gets it back into Skyline territory. You know what? Ryan Cap made a big play there, Larry, because he was in position. He let it bounce, but he was right in front of the ball, bounced to him. Had he not been there, that ball would have bounced till Friday. Yeah, it could have been a, a, a huge kick. But the other thing he did, too, is I love guys on punt returns that go north and south, Wayne. Enough of that dancing around. He knows there's only one place for him to go, and he's headed there in a hurry and picks up eight yards on that punt return. All right, the Heine Rams score. They got 236, plenty of time to work here in the second period. 21 to 7 in favor of the Grizzlies from Skyline. And Tanner Harris again with that roll, this time to the left. Has the time, has the man complete to Jordan Hill. That'll be very close to a Island first down. Had to get to the 35-yard line, and they're going to put it there. And when we see where the nose of the ball is, we'll know whether or not he's got a first down. And Brett Cutter, the head coach of the Highland Rams, is also the quarterbacks and running back coach. And he's elected to go to this rollout, and it's working very well right now for the Rams. Very disciplined route. Took a long time to develop, but he found Jordan Hill for the first down. Yeah, like you said, he had to buy his quarterback some time, and the only way to do that is to get a mobile quarterback, and that's what Tanner Harris is. Well, you can't sit back there and let those guys blitz you until you're, you're bleeding at the nose. You know, you get hit in the mouth enough, it's time to go somewhere else. It was a first down by the nose of the football. First and 10 from the 35-yard line. Harris, that's a straight drop back. Has a man open. That is complete to T.J. Acre, who came back for the football, and that's what made the play work. Definitely an underthrowing ball by Harris, but it, it worked out very nicely for the Rams. And T.J. Acre comes back again. A blitz, you see, 14 from Skyline. Kellen Zollinger coming off the corner, almost gets to the quarterback, Harris, but he lays it out and lays it short, and that's the key to that right there because the defensive back, Joshua Brown, had overrun the ball. You know, that's what Brown had great coverage for a while, but then Acre saw that it was underthrown, came back to the ball, and that's a sign of a good receiver helping his QB out. It's first and goal. The handoff to Klinghorn. Got it. All of a sudden, a new ball game. For a quarter and a half, it was all Skyline, and now for this last few minutes here, the second quarter, it's been all Highland. Kyle Kinghorn coming out of that T formation triple backfield, stretches out, gets the ball out over the goal line for the touchdown, but again, the two lead blockers by Highland clearing the way around that end and leading the way to the end zone for Kinghorn. On comes Kemp. Ryan Kemp on for the extra point attempt to make it a seven point ball game. And it's good. So with a minute 57 to go in the first half here at Holt Arena, it's A1 Division I championship game between what many consider the best way to get around that blitz and it's the rollout, Wayne. Well, it's gonna be interesting to see what Skyline does here in the last minute 57, if they can run this clock down, get into scoring position because they really don't wanna turn it over to the Rams again because they'll come right at you. Ryan Kemp getting ready to kick it off. He's got Taylor Lugo down there, along with Mitch Landon. And the ball's going to go to Landon. Landon will take it at the five-yard line. And he goes straight up, and he's hit it hard again. He is, he, no, he took it at about the five-yard line and only got to the 15, if he was lucky. Danny Frazier. Number 42 for Highland came down and make a, made a big hit and a big stick to really drop Landon in his tracks. This is guys just flying after the football. This is what you want if you're a coach. You got guys swarming. Nice play. I'm going to correct myself. That was Aaron Williams with that first hit. Aaron Williams, number 31. And they go to the Bowen, the fullback. Heath Bowen for a couple. Really just trying to run this clock down here. 
Amazing how momentum changes in a game, isn't it, Wayne? I mean, now the black shirts starting to get a little bit testy. They're starting to get a little more life in them. And it looks like Skyland will have taken their last. Now Highland took a timeout. Highland had two timeouts to go, so they've taken one of those two. And, and they just want to see what they can do here. They, they want to stop these guys, stuff them, make them punt the ball, and maybe get the ball back with about 45, 50 seconds to go and see if they can make something happen. Well, that confidence we were talking about, that momentum, you know, it's just infectious. And every guy on that Highland sideline now knows they're in this game. They know they're here to play. They know they're 23-0. They know they're 11-0 this season. They know how to win. Skyline on the other side, kind of shell-shocked right now. They've had two touchdowns stuffed down their throat. Passing game starting to work now for Highland. They're getting a little bit concerned, but still, They've had a good game plan going in, so I, I don't think Coach Dale Guilford is going to get away from that game plan. Earlier today here at the Hold Arena, it was uh, Firth beating Homedale. 30 to 19 was the final. Firth really looking like a pretty good ball club. And before that, uh, Hagerman got beat by Mackey. I can't remember what the score was, but it was not a very close game. Mackey coming up with a victory there. And uh, a game being played at Bronco Stadium tonight. Uh, Cuna playing Snake River out of Blackwood. How about the CUNA Cavemen? I mean, they got to be excited down there. They beat Weezer uh, last week in a game I think a lot of people didn't think they were going to win that game over in Weezer, but win it they did. Well, this is a fun time of year for the for the high schools. This is uh, milk bowl time. It's time to crown some champions. It's time to get a trophy. And now it's time for Skyline to run a play. And they get it to Taylor Lugo. Lugo's got some running room. And Lugo gets the first down, and that should allow them to run out the clock. I don't think, I think with that first down, Highland will probably allow the clock and the half to expire, not take out that last timeout. You know, kind of curious to me why Highland called that timeout. That's why I thought it must have been Skyline that called the timeout. Everything's going good. You stop them on first down for a two-yard game, and then you take a timeout. I don't understand that. The momentum's totally in their favor. There goes Taylor Lugo again. And as you can see right now, Skyline will be happy to get out of this half with a 21 to 14 lead. Get into the locker room, regroup, try to get that intensity back and come out. Remember, they will get the ball to start the second half. They won the toss, deferred to the second half, kicked off to Highland, and then just stuffed Highland, and then just kind of dominated them, took a 21-0 lead, and now it's 21-14. Whoa, forget about that. Sermon, the pass. I thought they'd run the clock out. Well, Skyline doesn't waste any time when they get to the line of scrimmage, do they, Wayne? I mean, they get up there and they snap, they run to the line of scrimmage, they get set, and they snap the ball. And a lot of times, that's a great ploy by the offense. You will catch the defense off guard in many, many cases. Highline, though, has been pretty consistent tonight in being ready. Well, they're so quick getting the line of scrimmage. It's almost like the last one to get there is in motion. Hey, don't they know we can't finish our thoughts if they don't, you know, call it, you know, a couple of audibles or... Uh, uh take their time up there and you got to be ready for these guys here they go ready set go <laughs> and they're going to pass it again sermon looking he's got a man open and he overthrows it it would have been a short touchdown he had taylor lugo wide open and if he hit him it was a touchdown but the reason he had to deliver that ball a little bit early was the fact that highland was coming up the middle and providing some pressure and you see 68 coming up the middle. Adam Smith forcing that ball to be thrown just a split second early. Sermon was not ready to deliver that ball. Wow. Here comes the block. Attempt. They get off the punt, and it's going to be a good punt. Take a big bounce. Ryan Kemp takes it at the 24. A couple of moves. He's down. We're down to 30 seconds. So Island will get the ball back with exactly 29 seconds to go here in the half. And being at your own 32 with 29 seconds left, I'd be curious to see what Brett Cutter decides to do here. Is he going to rev this thing up, throw the ball down the field a few times? I mean, uh, certainly the, the Cutter family, his dad Jim, his, his brother Dirk, now the head coach at Boise State, uh, they know the passing game fairly well. And if there's anybody that can get down the field in 29 seconds, it would certainly be a team coached by a Cutter. Now look for a screen, something up the middle. See what happens here. 29 seconds to go and a half. Harris. And he is going deep. Throws it. It is complete. And again, coming back to the ball is Adrian. Adrian with a couple of big moves. 
16 seconds left in the first half. He goes down at the 23-yard line. T.J. Acre for the second time in this game comes back to get an underthrown ball. Well, I, I would dare say that that is not a planned play, but it's certainly a play that has a good plan right now. Very effective when he gets the ball after the catch. Acre. I know with one timeout left. Again, going to the corner, Acre overthrown, kind of threw it away. Harris that time just said, let's throw it away. We got five seconds left. It's a good thing he did if he wasted any more time. That was an 11-second play. Yeah, that one bounced off the railing of the uh, first row of seats here at Holt Arena. But he does have time to try one more. Well, this will be a 40-yard field goal attempt is what they're looking at right now. They got Ryan Kemp out there to try it. If well, they we indeed this, go for it. This wouldn't, see, uh, wouldn't be a bad place for a fake right here either. Well, the holder is Kyle Kinghorn. 40-yard field goal attempt. And Ryan Kemp. Guy's got a lot of foot. Is it straight? No. Wide left. He had plenty of foot, but it was wide left. And that's going to end the half. Behind the Rams making a real surge here, Larry. Yeah, they absolutely did there. They brought themselves back into the game. 14 second quarter points. And I, you know, Wayne, I'll tell you, I don't know whether you uh, try to kick a field goal or throw it into the end zone one last time there, but they've got to feel good going in with 14 points on the board. They really do. 21 nothing, and uh, Highland comes back with 14 points to make it a 21-14 game here at halftime. Let's go down to Jeff Caves now. Jeff? We're with Skyline head coach Dave Guilford. Coach, uh, first half, maybe a tale of two different quarters. How did the momentum switch so fast? Well, they had an explosive football team. If you haven't figured it out yet, they, that's a great, great football team. You're not going to shut them out. You're not going to hold them down. You have to play four quarters against them. They're playing great football. So the message for your troops at the half, have you had a time to put together some words? Well, we just have to start a bit. Yeah, we're going to talk about we got to get calmed down, keep our composure, and play hard against them. Remember what got us here, and then... You know, if we can keep our composure and execute, then we got a chance. All right, thanks a lot, Coach. Okay, we'll be back with more festivities here on the United Dairy and Idaho Sports Network. We're at the half, 21-17. Milk Bowl 98 rolls on. We're back here at halftime at Holt Arena. Milk Bowl 98 off in great fashion. It's 21-14 at the half. We're with uh, Don Papenberg right now with the United Dairymen of Idaho. And 
We always take a little time right now to talk more about what the dairymen do with the Idaho High School Activities Association, and specifically today, most people know you're involved in bringing the Milk Bowl Championship Series to high school football, but there's so much more to what you provide for the experience at the high school level. Well, that's right, Jeff. Uh, not only athletics uh, we're involved with, uh, with the High School Activities Association, but also speech debate, uh, music. Um, there's uh, quite an extensive thing. drug awareness program. In fact, uh, right now they're on the field. They're just giving out a, an award for uh, uh, academics, and uh, we also uh, help sponsor that. So it's more than just sports. It's uh, more than just maybe the United Dairymen of Idaho. There's all kinds of people that work with the dairymen uh, at the farms and, and, and their wives and their families. It seems like it's a, it's a real community effort when you get these guys all together, and the whole state benefits, and I don't know that everybody keeps track of it. Well, that's right. It's, uh, you know, really the... the Dairy farm families of Idaho support this program. It's, it's money taken out of their check that that uh, that helps sponsor all of these things. Uh, they're the heroes of the entire program. Uh, the farm families, the people who work on the farms producing the milk that that everybody uh, hopefully enjoys. And uh, uh, this is one way of our uh, way of saying thank you uh, for your participation and consuming our products. When you uh, talk to the dairymen and. They look forward to 1999 and the years beyond. What are some of the challenges maybe that they're facing in the state and the future of what they're getting done and how it ties into the future of the relationship with the Idaho High School Activities Association and, and high school athletics and, and everything else? Well, on the farm, there's always challenges. Uh, there's uh, waste uh, challenges, uh, environmental challenges, which uh, we, we probably in the state of Idaho lead the entire nation in uh, taking, taking care of uh, that issue. Uh, the price of milk is always an issue. So the price of milk fluctuates up and down. Uh, right now it's not too bad, but uh, when, it, when it goes uh, down, it goes down. Well, till then, everybody's got milk, right, Pat? I sure hope so. I hope they're drinking it, too. Thanks once again for having us. Thank you. Don Pattenberg put together United Dairy and Nevada Host Sports Network. First class. Hope you're enjoying it. We'll be back with more from Holt Arena 2114. Skyline with the upset. We'll be back. And Boca Tunnel, Idaho, Wayne DeZubak, Lori Pulowski, Jeff Caves with you. As you can see, it's 21-14. The Skyline Grizzlies lead Highland here at halftime. And, Paul, I will tell you what, the uh, Highland Rams got back into this thing through the air, not on the ground. They have four yards rushing in the first half and 203 yards through the air. Well, for a game we thought we might see a little bit more of a running game, it has been a passing game for both teams, and that's where the real produ production has come, with the exception of Skyline and one big punt return. But as you look at the yardage, the passing yardage in Highland's favor, they had come screaming back in that second quarter and really put some big yards up. When you put 200 yards up, and Wayne, I would guarantee almost all of that came in the second quarter. That's what I was going to say, really all of that late second quarter. I mean, with four minutes to go in the uh, first half, it was still 21 and nothing in favor of Skyline. And you take a look at some of the uh, individual statistics, passing Tanner Harris, 10 out of 14 for 203 yards. His long was 45. Jordan Sermon, 6 out of 11 for 66 yards. He's got a couple of touchdowns to his credit. And a couple of receivers from Highland really stepping it up. T.J. Akery, three catches for 92 yards. Griffin Proctor, four catches for 74 yards. On the other side of the ball, Taylor Lugo has three receptions for 25 yards. So Skyline's production coming in little shorter spurts. Highland having to make the long drives to get their ball into the end zone. Be interesting to see if the Rams, who have the momentum at the end of the half, can carry it on into the third quarter. Remember, it'll be Skyline with the football to start the third quarter. We'll be back here in Hold Arena at Pocatello. We got a great one going for you. The A1 Division I Championship game. It's Skyline 21, Highland 14. Don't go away. Five yard drive took 39 seconds, made it 14 to nothing Skyline. In the second period at 9-12, Heath Bowen a one yard run. It was an 11-play, 73-yard drive, probably the most impressive of the night for Skyline. Took 3.30 off the clock, made it 21 to nothing, and then the Highland Rams got it in gear. They scored with 4.07 to go in the half. Tanner Harris, a one-yard run. It was an 11-play, 100-yard drive. I mean, I don't know where they got that out of there, but anyway, uh, it's 100 yards is what they got down there. That's I, a long drive. That was a long drive, and I've said it because I saw it, but I don't believe it. Took 5.05, made it 21 to 7. And then with a minute 57 to go and a half, Kyle Klinghorn from one yard out, a three-play, 45-yard drive, 39 seconds, made it 21 to 14. And that's, folks, where we're at right now, 21 to 14. The Grizzlies lead it, and they'll have the ball to start the third. 
Well, a tale of two games within the quarters, Wayne. First quarter, all Skyline. Skyline's defense blitzing like a bunch of madmen, creating all kinds of havoc for Landon Harris and the offense for Highland being able to do nothing. Skyline's offense moving the ball. They get a punt return. They get the ball in the end zone three times. Second quarter, just reverse the roles because it's totally opposite in that second quarter. Matt, I hope you're enjoying this statewide broadcast of A1 Division I football. It's been a good game. All right, we're getting ready to go. It'll be Ryan Kemp kicking it off, and he'll kick it off either to Mitch Land in number 23, the man you saw right there, or Tyler Lugo. And if you're the Highland team, you know what you got to do. You got to come out and stuff them on defense. You got to start with the momentum and get it back in a hurry. And sometimes after a team is deferred, gets the ball to start the third quarter, if you're in a situation that Highland is, you like that because now you can go out there with the defense and maybe set the tone. We'll see. All right, here we go. Waiting for the official to let this thing go. Come on, I'm getting excited. And Kemp puts a foot into it. And it goes into the end zone. They'll take it out at the 20-yard line. And you see what they did that time? Skyline switched their guys. They had Tyler Lugo come to the near side and Landon go to the far side. Ah, and Kemp, games Kemp outsmarted played. him because he kicked it to the right, and that's where <laughs> Landon went to. So <laughs> if they were trying to get the ball into the hands of, of Taylor Lugo, that one didn't work very well. No, really, it did. It's kind of a moot point because when you kick the ball five yards into the end zone, nobody's returning it anyway. Exactly, but a lot of mind games going on here. Here we go. First and ten from the 20-yard line. The handoff up the middle, Heath Bowen. Well, Bowen makes it look pretty easy when he goes up the middle like that. Really not much of a hole, a little bit of a crease on the left side of the offensive line, but he picks up four yards on what seems to be not much of a play at all. Play just now there, you see a little mini huddle there. The play comes in from the sideline. Three guys huddle up. Two receivers know what it is, so they just go right to the positions and scramble to the line of scrimmage, and here we go. Bowen again. All that to get Bowen for a one-yard game. Well, they, they leave the huddle early, Wayne, because they have to. As fast as Skyline gets to the ball and snaps it, those wide receivers would never have a chance to get out and get set. So they have to leave early. That's why the little mini huddles beforehand. If you had a receiver that quick, I'd sign him up in a hurry. So two runs, two hands off to Bowens, and right now Skyline facing a third down and four, and that's not exactly what they wanted to have happen here. They wanted to control the football a little bit, and just take some of this mow away from the guys in the black jerseys. We'll see what happens. Sermon, back to pass, looking and nobody there. Good coverage that time by Jared Carlson. Jared Carlson's been a name we've mentioned quite a bit. Starting about halfway through that second quarter, he had some nice coverage on receivers. He had a nice play on special teams and made a great form tackle. He's been a guy that's really stepped up to play. And when you're a senior and you're 5'10", 150, and this is your last game in high school. You're going to lay it all on the line, Wayne. Kinghorn and Kemp deep to receive the punt from Jordan Sermon. And Sermon gets it off, and it's a boomer. High. Kemp calls for it. Takes it up to 35. A couple of nice nifty moves and runs north and south and clouds the people over. And gets all the way to the 44-yard line. I tell you, that little dude can get his legs going in a hurry, can he? I mean, he just saw a little bit of a sliver of light there. There's really not much here. They're trying a right return, and there's nowhere to go. Lugo misses the tackle there, and he just accelerates for about seven or eight yards. And he says hello to Theron Smith right there at the end. Theron did not need that kind of greeting. Not sure it was a hello. Harris back to pass. Nothing there. He tries to get something out of it, but again, nice defense by the Skyline Grizzlies. John Bellhoff was the guy to really goof that up. Todd Mortensen will be credited with the tackle, but you're right, it's the surge of the defensive front that collapses that pocket right back on Harris, and he has nowhere to go, so he just tries to lose as little yardage as he can. Ball back to the 43. Second down and 11. Tanner Harris, as the Rams come out in the high formation, the blitz was coming, and I tell you, Ryan Kemp ran right where the blitz came from. Look at that balance by Ryan Kemp. That's an amazing little run. He takes the ball, runs right around the blitz, 
Let's watch here. The blitz is coming up the middle, landing. They run right by it. This tackle here, and watch the balance and footwork. He gets the hand down, regathers himself, and picks up another four yards. That's an incredible run. Well, sometimes you live right. Paul, when you got a run call to the right and the blitz comes to your right, and you run right by it. You saw land and kind of nowhere land as the running back ran right by him. Third down and about a foot. High formation for the Rams. Eight men in the box for Skyline. They hand it outside to Kemp. Kemp gets the first down. Didn't need much, but he saw eight and nine in the box and ran outside. And when he got outside, he thought he saw a lot more than what he actually ended up with. See good line surge there. Kemp makes a good decision to cut it to the outside to pick up the first down, but great reaction by Skyline to get over there and hold him to just a minimal gain, although he did get the first down. Yeah, all he needed was a foot. That's what that play was designed for. Ball at the 44-yard line now, first and 10 for the Rams. They trail 21-14. And another blitz. Harris looking over the middle, wide open as Acre. Touchdown! There's been two main connections tonight for this Highland Ram offense. Harris to Proctor, Harris to Acre. That was Harris to Acre, and that's six points. Well, you live by the blitz, you die by the blitz. And Ryan Kemp is on now to try the extra point to tie it up at 21. Wayne, you and you're going to run a five or six set step drop like Highland did there. You can't allow this to happen. You've got to get to that quarterback. They set eight guys, left their DBs in man coverage, and Acre just runs by him. And what a beautiful pass by Landon Harris. Now, 247 yards and a touchdown. He's having a whale of a quarter and a half. After this kickoff, we'll go down to Jeff Caves, hear what he has to say about things. But first, let's check out this kickoff. Ryan Kemp. Boy, does he have a leg, huh? Lugo takes it three yards deep. Out at the 20. Where it'll be first and 10 for Scotland. Let's go down to Jeff Caves. The mood is decidedly different down here on the Skyline sideline, Steve. The mood at one point coming out of the half was one of optimism. The defense really needed to do what they had to do to give the offense some momentum. And now it's all on the offense. So I think it'll be interesting to see how many times Lugo gets the ball if they stick with the original game plan and say, well, he gets it as much as the quarterback thinks he needs it versus they need him now. He should get the ball. All right, instead it goes to number 40, and that is Greg Beard. He tries the left side and not a lot there. Baird, a guy that shares a little time at running back and tight end, 6'1", 180-pounder, junior. And I think Jeff has a very valid point. Lugo's your go-to guy all year. Might want to put the ball in his hands a few more times. Well, you got to give him somehow get him into the program. He has been your man all season long. You go to Lugo. You go to illegal procedure. Yep. But that happens. I mean, I don't know how they, obviously it's because this is the kind of game they play, but me seeing Skyline in a full game for the first time, uh, I don't know how they do that. Well, it's actually offside against the Highland Rams. So if, if it's not procedure, it certainly is. Prior to the snap, encroachment on the defense, still second down. There's enough motion on the interior part of that offensive front that it does get guys to jump, but I don't think there was a jump problem there. I just think Island lined up offside. Sometimes it's like a fire drill out there. All right, here we go. They come up to the line of scrimmage now. Back to live action, second down. Handoff to the second man through. Nice little play that time, and a handoff to Tim Flint, 6'1", 175-pound senior. And he is very close to the first down. Well, if the goal is to use Lugo as a decoy, it's working. Because he's not getting the ball. <laughs> Here comes Flynn on the inside scissor play. And really does a pretty 
nice job of getting the yardage that he does to set up a third and one. Yeah, they may be using him as a decoy, but his defense right now is shooting down everything else. Quarterback sneak for the first time. Wow, look at that line surge by Skyline. That's one thing that that quick snap will do. You got to love it as a quarterback. In fact, that thing happens so quickly, it's, it's marginal to whether the quarterback really gets set when he gets under the ball. Sermon came away from there kind of holding his arm and rotating it as if he hurt it somewhat. But look at the line surge. Watch the guys in the black just get knocked back. Well, when you see shoulder pads underneath, white ones underneath black ones, white will win. Here comes Flint. Oh, oh Flint. Island has it. Jordan Hill comes up with the ball. Flint still on the ground. He got hit. Oh, he got stuck, Wayne. Yeah, he did. There's no way he could have held on to that ball. He got hit right smack in the helmet. He is getting up, walking off under his own power, but he is still seeing a couple of three different teams out here. Well, he took it right in the chin. As he was starting to cut back a little bit, he had his weight a little bit off balance, and he took full force of that thing right in the chin, and that helmet knocks the ball loose and knocks him for a loop. And Jordan Hill comes up with the ball. That's 21-21 is our score. The handoff to Ryan Kemp, up the middle. Really, his own teammates that time slowed him down. He got eight. A couple of offensive lines that are really coming off the ball well now, but Highland's offensive line, just with that renewed vigor now, they're just enthused. They're, they're rolling off of a high, off of 21 straight points and actually now force themselves to call a timeout. Well, I think Skyline decided to take the timeout just really to sit there and figure what's going on here. You know, what are we doing? What do we need to do? How can we get back in this thing? How can we regroup? It's tough. Now the handoff to Kemp. He's got a first down and then some. All the way down to the 23-yard line, Ryan Kemp. Well, the guy, if there ever was a definition of a scat back, it's Ryan Kemp. This guy gets to the hole. And he is so quick at making things happen, and he can accelerate on a dime. I mean, he really gets from 0 to 60 in a, in a short amount of time. 6.35 to go here, third quarter. We're tied at 21. And that's a great stat there, isn't it? 202 out of their, I mean, he had, almost, he had over half of their production of points by their offense. That's amazing. First down. Tanner Harris rolling right, throws complete to Jordan Hill. Gain down to about the 19-yard line. Not much of it pick up, maybe four. Highland doing a lot better job now of mixing up the play. This is just a short roll out here. This is not really designed to go too far outside. He sees his receiver. They take the three yards that they give him, and they run with it. Second down, six. Ball at the 19-yard line. Ryan kept the man up the middle. He's got some running room. And he's in for the touchdown. Ryan Kemp just would not be denied. The Highland Rams have scored 27 unanswered points to take the lead, 27-21, with a PAT try to come. Well, you're, if you're not impressed with the heart of that little guy, number 20, Ryan Kemp, then you really don't like football very much because this guy's got a lot of heart and a lot of soul. Well, he's also got the kick and chew on. He had the touchdown shoe, now the after point shoe. Yeah, Kemp was off to the right, and that could be a huge miss. Well, he might be a little bit tired after all that work he did to get into the end zone. In fact, let's watch that work right here. Play designed to go up the middle again. The outside blitzers for Skyline are really of no value on a play like that because they just run upfield and run themselves right out of the play. Highland's got that figured out now, and you see the tenacity of Kemp to get himself into the end zone. Nine carries for 77 yards, and of course that touchdown right there to put Highland up 27-21. Now, how big will that missed extra point be? Well, I'll tell you what, it may not be big if the Skyline Grizzlies can't get some kind of momentum going back here because Highland is able to score at will. Grizzlies need to get a drive going, get something going again, get on the board, and then that point will be big. You made a comment earlier, Wayne, 
live by the blitz, die by the blitz, and that's really what's happening to Skyline right now. When you continually blitz your outside men, a good offensive coordinator, and certainly Brent Cutter would have to be put into that category, he will figure out something to beat that blitz. Now, it may be the quick pass, three-step drop, it may be a rollout, they tried that earlier. Hey, how about handing it off to a guy and let him run right up the middle, and they run right by that blitz. It's, it's a, a very, a very productive offensive game plan that Highland's implementing right now. I used to see Landon and Lugo over there talking to each other, saying, okay, do we stay put? Do we, do we try to switch around? And let's see what happens. Ryan Kemp, very busy man. As you see, a four-play, 39-yard drive after the fumble. It took a minute 26. So the Rams wasting no time to take their first lead in this ball game. At one point down, 21 nothing. Now up 27 to 21. And that time, uh, the two guys lined up in a tandem. Lugo goes and gets it, and he gets stuck. That, that was Parker Kemp. <laughs> yes, it was. <laughs> that was Parker Kemp getting up close and personal with Taylor Lugo. Face to face. Helmet to helmet, kisser to kisser. Well, I'll tell you what, they, they lined up in a tandem. Lugo went and got the ball, and then bang. Hello, Mr. Kemp, I'd like you to meet Tyler Lugo. Wayne, um, that does not feel very good. That really does not feel very good at all. Well, I think you can see Mr. Moe's wearing a black jersey still. Let's see if the Grizzlies can change it around. Handoff to Bowen. Breaks through for a little bit there. Gets a gain of about five yards. Nice little play by Heath Bowen. Pretty good control of the line of scrimmage by Highland's defensive front. But again, Bowen with a powerful lower body just keeps working his way and working his way and picks up, uh, actually, looks like they're going to give him six yards on that carry. So very productive first down play, and that's exactly what Skyline needs right now. Clock continues to run. 5-10 to go here, third period. Bowen up the middle. He's stuffed this time. Nowhere to go but into the arms of a couple of defenders. Uh, Reed Hymas was one of them. Well, Reed Hymas was the guy that made the first contact, and he wrapped him up and kept him from getting any farther. Maybe a gain of half a yard, one yard on that play. But well, watch Hymas here. He makes the first hit, and he wraps him up, and he keeps him up unless his buddies rally to the football. And look, there's six guys on the ball by the time he goes down. Third down, three, ball at the 24-yard line. Big play here for Skyline. They want to keep the ball. Nice cut up the middle for the first down. Nice little cut that time by Greg Beard. The 6'1", 180-pound running back slash tight end. That's right, he's a slash. <laughs> we have a slash in this game, Wayne. And he slashed right up the middle there. That was a good move. Greg Beard, great little cutback right there to get to the hole. There was nothing outside. Very good recognition. Lugo. Lugo just kind of sheds tacklers. Nice little gain of seven, maybe eight. Lugo that time showed you a little bit of the class that we thought we'd see out of this running back in the ability to shift gears, bring things down just a notch, follow your blockers, give them a little bit of the old Larry Brown dead leg where you, you kind of just limp your way through the hole until you find more of an opening. And a great one there for seven yards. Second down and three. Right up the middle they go. That's Bowen again, a big fullback. A little bit of a turf tackle that time as Bowen kind of tripped over his own feet. Still going to leave him a yard short of that first down. Well, you know, you talked about it a little while ago. You got to try to go to Lugo. He's your guy. You can decoy him all night long. That's like, you know, 49ers saying, hey, we decoyed him. We never threw once to Jerry Rice. You look up on the scoreboard and it's 24-10. You know what I mean? <laughs> you got to go to your man. Up the middle they go. Nice little fake there. Everybody going through with the uh, fakes. Lugo like he was going to get a pitch. Quarterback going through with it. And up the middle goes Bowen for the first down. Key to that play, though, is left tackle Kip Landon. 6'3", 255-pound tackle. He just blows off the ball, and he moves the whole line of scrimmage back three or four yards very easy for Bowen to get that first down yeah this is what Skyline wants now they got to finish it they got a first down and ten Sermon back to pass over the middle well he had a guy wide open for a minute couldn't quite get it to him and again Wayne he's rushed that time by the rush of Adam Smith from Highlands defensive front this kid's been in Sermon's face three or four times tonight he just gets off his block and you can see the hit right after the delivery 
but I still think it made him throw the ball a little bit sooner than he wanted to. Yeah, he saw Adamson out there break it open, but he, you're right. He, I think he wanted to wait about another second before he threw it. Couldn't do it. So now you go for it on first down. Now you got a second down and 10. Lugo. Nothing there. They were waiting for it. Well, and they might have blown that whistle just a little bit early, but uh, Lugo was not quite ready to stop yet. But the officials deemed that his forward progress had been stopped, so they blew the whistle. Well, they've seen a couple of big hits tonight to the head, and I think trying to protect some of these young kids because there is some intense hitting going on down there in this A1 Division I championship game. And, you, and Dale Guilford's idea of decoying Lugo is not a bad idea, but they still key on him, and when he's in the game, if he gets the ball up the middle, that's not going to work very well. It's going to be short of the first down. Nice catch that time by Adamson. Well, now you have some decision time. Only 2.20, and it looks like there won't be much of a decision. Yeah, you got to kick it away. Although, you know, you got your quarterback punter. So Jordan Sermon is the punter. He's the quarterback. You never know. But on fourth down and five, ball at the 46-yard line, your side of the field, you pretty much got to punt it away and hope that you can get some field position back out of this. Kemp takes it inside the 15, makes an outside move. He's got some running room now down the sideline. He's chased out of bounds, but a great return by Ryan Kemp. This is one of the uh, great inside-outside cuts you're ever going to see. Is Kemp coming up, catching the punt. Watch the inside-out cut. He takes it straight up the field, and then boom, outside, Gonzo. Look at the defenders falling flat on their face. There's not much you can do with that move. That's an incredible move. Where really is. I'll tell you what. That last time, Jordan Sermon, had he just pulled up and not punted it and run to the right, everybody was going for the return. Nobody was watching him. He would have made about 100 yards. Anyway, Tanner Harris fires it. Complete to Proctor. Wide open. Griffin Proctor's been a big target tonight. He was there. Another first down for the Rams who have gone through the air, and right now Skyline can't find a way to stop them. Well, in Skyline, you know, they don't know whether to, whether to come or go on that blitz. That time they elect not to come with the blitz. They drop back into a zone coverage. They only rush. Well, they, they do blitz that time, actually. They bring a sixth guy off the corner, and it's picked up very well, leaving the man coverage. Well, if you call that man coverage, I, I don't think there was any coverage out there on Proctor. First down, the ball at the 42-yard line. Handed off to Kemp. Nice job of penetration that time by the defensive skyline. Getting in there first was Bryce McBride. 5'8", 140 pounder, just a little kid, but he got in there, made some penetration, forced Ryan Kemp to make a move. Watch again, Skyline's outside guys coming off the end. That time they at least held up in the middle of the line of scrimmage so that they wouldn't allow Kemp to do what he did to them before and scamper through the middle for about 15 or 20 yards. Gain of only two on first down for the Rams. Second down and eight now, ball resting at the 40-yard line. Minute 25 to go here, third quarter, 27-21. Highland leads it. After being down 21-0, they've had 27 unanswered points. A missed extra point. They loom big. Blitz. They get it out of there to Ryan Kemp. Boy, Tanner Harris is doing a great job of picking up the blitz. And ever since Skyline, excuse me, Highland has gone to the rollout right or left, it's been a big difference in the ball game. And Kyle Kinghorn gets a great block here, too. Look at the back. Sealing off the rollout for his, for his quarterback so that he can get that ball out on the flat to Kemp, and then you know what he's going to do. I mean, he's going to turn it upfield and get as much as he can. And he does. Gets another first down. So the ball at the 29-yard line as the Rams continue to drive. We have a player down. Can't see him because of the way the configuration of this uh, whole arena here is we can't really see what happened down there. I can't tell if that's Fort That is 14. So for Skyline, that's uh, Kellen Zollinger, the defensive back. Got some wind knocked out of him. You're gonna maybe a little shoulder problem. He's holding that left arm a little gingerly. Yeah, we can't we can't see him. That was on the near side, the skyline uh, sidelines, and the stands kind of hang over, and the players sit underneath the stands. Can't really see him. How about Tanner Harris? 11, or excuse me, 15 of 20, 278 yards. 
He's put up some serious numbers. Yeah, he's really seeing the field well. He gets out there on the corner, sees it well, and throws it well. First down. Hand off to Kemp. Big hole up the middle. Ryan Kemp has another first down. Gain of 11. He'll take it all the way down to the 18-yard line. I'm seeing just a little bit of, of tiredness now on this skyline defense. As you watch this play go right back up the middle, Kemp will hit that hole in a hurry and get as much as he can, but I saw a lot of white shirts getting up really slow. Maybe this uh, extended amount of drives that this Highland offense has had is starting to take its toll on the conditioning. 48 seconds to go here in the third quarter. Kemp again, up the middle, again, a nice little hole. He'll gain five. And I mean, I tell you what, they're getting five without blinking an eye, aren't they? Yeah, they're really rolling up that first down. That's a, a big advantage when you can pick up that kind of urge. And we have another injury here. Skyline player down. Yeah, and this is really a uh, indication of how tough Highland is hitting. I mean, they're really coming out there, putting a helmet on people. Really getting up slow there is uh, Mike Perks. So I think it was, was it 65? Yeah, lead loader number 65. Oh, it was 65, not 85. Sorry about well, that. Well, he, he got hit so hard it screwed his jersey all up, and you can't <laughs> hardly see the number. <laughs> That's what it is. Just kind of corkscrewed his whole body around there. <laughs> He's, he was not feeling good as he limped off the sidelines. But there was some incredible impact there. You could hear it on our, our camera that has a mic on it down at the 20-yard uh, line. That was quite, Im quite an impact. Second down and six. Hiding with the ball at the 14, and Tanner Harris uh, calls timeout with 11 seconds to go here in the third quarter. I think he might have got spooked by that clock running down and maybe thought that he better get the timeout so they'd have a chance to at least run two plays before the end of the quarter. I'm not sure what he was thinking there. Yeah, I'm not sure either. Hey, let's go down to Jeff Case. Maybe he knows what he's thinking. Jeff? I don't know what they're thinking. I'm getting a little injury update for you. I think the defensive back, Zollinger, will be back. In about 10 or 15 minutes, he's putting ice on his shoulder. As it relates to Lee Loader that just came off the field, they're just checking him out right now, but I would anticipate him coming back in the field. But as Larry and Wayne, you both know, these are all signs of a team getting worn down. And the fourth quarter's not even here yet. I, it'll be interesting to see how Skyline rallies emotionally to overcome this, this physical tiredness that they've got. So we'll see what happens. Reno? All right, thank you, Jeff. Appreciate it. He's right. I mean, you can just see it starting to wear down on the Grizzlies right now. They came out, had everything under control, and just kind of lost it here. And I'll tell you, this score, if Highland can push it in here, could be a big one. Well, and a big part of this drive and a big part of this resurgence in the second, third quarter has been Ryan Kemp. 11 carries for 88 yards and that one touchdown, but at an 8-yard a carry clip. Well, that's not a good thing for Skyline's mentality. You go back to a halftime stat that stuck out for Highland. They had four yards rushing in the first half, and now Ryan Kemp's got 88 yards. Complete turnaround in this ball game. Second down and six at the 14-yard line. Kemp again. Not a whole lot there, maybe two. A little better played that time. Mitch Landon was in on it. And that ends the third quarter here. So we have played three quarters of this A1 Division I championship game, and the Highland Rams have owned the last quarter and a half. It is 27-21. Highland leading it. We'll be back for the final quarter after this. And we are back here at Hold Arena. And they just gave us a final score from over in Boise tonight. Snake River 27 and CUNA 7. Ow. Yeah, so Snake River wins that championship. And here we go with the fourth quarter here. That's Ryan Kemp again. Down to the 10-yard line. That'll bring up a fourth down. Now a three-pointer here puts you definitely in two-score territory. Yeah, it looks and like they're going to stick with the program. And no, I think we're going to we're going to see the kick. All right, Ryan. No, we're not going to see the kick. Well, Kinghorn's the holder. He is in the ball game. So is Ryan Kemp. But he doesn't have a tee. He's the kicker. Now, now we got all kinds of guys coming in here. What do we got going? Well, we may need a timeout here, by if you're Highland. <laughs> they did, could yeah, not make a decision. Have to call the timeout. Yeah, they could not make a decision, so they'll call timeout. Yep, a lot of stuff going on there. Take a 31, 
21 lead, and you force them to score a couple of times, what do you do? Well, that's a tough decision to make, really. I mean, this is fourth, and, you know, it's a, almost a yard and a half, two yards possibly. And that's a long ways to go, and if you get stuffed, Skyline gets the momentum back. So, conversely, kick the field goal, get up 30 to 21, put Skyline in a position where they have to score twice. Our Big decision to make. Yeah, our aerials tonight, by the way, provided by Oriole. <laughs> Look at that. Cow. Oreo the cow. Yeah. Making a trip over. Is that the same now? Is that the same one that's at the pavilion all the time? That is, that's a traveling Oreo. You know, I didn't see it. I came over on the interstate today. I did not see it making the trip over here. That bad boy flies down the freeway anywhere you want it to go. I tell you. You gotta see that thing once it gets going, man. Holy some serious cow. wheels. Does it follow the, uh, I mean, does it watch for speed limits and stuff like that? I think when you're uh, that big and you're that black and white, you can do pretty much whatever you want to do. And it runs on milk. They don't have to don't stop at those gas stations. We yeah, all we all run do. On milk. Tonight we do. Tonight we're all running on milk, baby. Yeah, I'll see if it beats me back tonight. I don't know. I've seen you drive between Pocatello <laughs> and Boise before. <laughs> well, I was there once. At one in the morning, baby, you can fly. <laughs> now, the Idaho State Patrol, yeah, now, please take now, notice. Now, now they're watching. If they're watching TV at the patrol house, I'm in trouble. Here we go. They're going to try the field goal attempt. Yeah, at least they're going to look like it. From the 17-yard line, 27-yard attempt, nothing but good. Now you got to do that, Wayne. That's a great call. That's a smart, smart football play. And it's smart, especially when you have a kicker the caliber of a Ryan Kemp. All right, it's 30 to 27, 30 to 21, rather. Excuse me, in favor of the Rams. Let's go down to Jeff Cave. Jeff. Well, earlier you saw Lee Loader, the big defensive lineman, a junior, go down. It's been determined it's a hip flexor. He's doubtful. We'll see if he can work it out. They were working on him. Maybe even a bigger concern now is uh, Brody Landon goes down, a linebacker. He's got an arm injury. I mean, this is now four guys on one series that are gimpy, and there's other seconds coming in. So it'll be an interesting fourth quarter. Wayne? All right, thank you, Jeff. Appreciate the updates on the end. Just keep them coming at you. Once again, Taylor Lugo. Pitch landing deep to receive the kickoff from Ryan Kemp. 30 to 21 in favor of the Highland Rams, who fell behind 21 nothing in this ball game if you just tuned in and have scored 30 unanswered points. Kickoff short and out of bounds. So that's a break for the Grizzlies. They don't have to return anything, don't have to block anything, don't have to get hit. They can just line it up at the 35-yard line. I always appreciated a kick like that when I was on special teams. Didn't have to hit anybody. And I think Ryan Kemp may, maybe get a little <laughs> tired himself. My goodness. You know, we talked about Taylor Lugo being the do-it-all kind of guy that he is. See a procedure call. Obviously, the procedure is you kick the ball out of bounds, which is illegal procedure. Exactly. But Ryan Kemp's the do-it-all guy right now for this Highland Ram team. All right, let's see if Skyline can get this thing going again. Taylor Lugo, no, excuse me, Flint right side. The guy that got hit in the head, and he's got a first down. 11-yard game for Tim Flint. Well, he's back in the game after taking a big hit. But he took that hit, still looking, he's still going. Well, if you caught the, the start of that play, Jason Hawks, number three for Highland, was still running to the left side of the football as the cornerback, and you see he gets kicked out there by Ballins, and that frees up the running back to pick up yardage and get the first down. But Highland, because of the way that Skyline runs to the ball, were, was definitely not in position there to field that play. Again, a huge series right here for the Grizz. The pass over the middle. Incomplete, there was contact, they say it was incidental. Boy, the pass was intended for Justin Branson, and he got his feet tied up with Jared Carlson, and they made no call. He said it was just incidental, watch it again. And the scary part, if you're a, a Skyline, Skyline fan, is that 84 Jeff Miles is running down the middle of the field, waving his, or not, not the middle, the right side of the field, waving his arms, he's wide open out there. Sermon couldn't find him. Lugo gets around the corner. He's got some speed. He stiff arms one guy. He's down to the 40, the 25 yard line. Now, did he get to the corner quick or what? And he comes up limping a little bit. 
Well, he took a pretty good lick there at the end. He and Jordan Hill from Highland had a pretty good collision on the sideline. As you watch this sweep play develop, he does get to the corner in a hurry, and when he gets up ahead of steam, there's yeah. no way DBs are going <laughs> to tackle him like that. And they're watching the contact here at the end of this play. Good hit. All right, here we go. Sermon back to pass. Wide open is Bowen. Cuts back in at the 10. Down to the five-yard line. First and goal for Skyline. What a great call that time. Bowen came from the other side. They looked left, went back to the right. Look at him look left. Now he goes back to the right. Well, that time Sermon found the open receiver. Do you see any defenders anywhere near him? Uh, no, I don't either. But Tommy Stoddard finally comes up and grabs on and tries to get the raging bull down. Here we go. Taylor Lugo took a deep handoff back there, and Carlson came up. Excuse me, that's not Carlson. Danny Fraser, Danny, okay. 42 for Highland, came up and at least got some penetration. He didn't make the tackle, but he forced Lugo to go somewhere where he didn't want to go. Yeah, he really did. Sometimes when he had that ball up so deep back there in the backfield, allows you to regroup on defense. Second down and goal. Right up the middle. Skyline needs to score on this play, and I don't mean a field goal. And a little roll reversal this time. They send Lugo up the middle as a blocker, and they follow it up with Bowens, and that worked pretty well. Got him down to the two-yard line. All right, third down, a goal to go. You got to believe this is two, four-down territory for the Skyline Grizzlies. Bowen in for the score. They don't need the second one. Keith Bowen, 5'11", 200-pounder, takes it in. The way these, these officials really want to make sure that ball's in the end zone. Those calls are coming pretty late. And the kick is no good. Well, Off they're going to the get right. another chance. Yeah, they got running into the kicker. Number three, Jason Hawks ran into the holder. Here's the touchdown play where you see Bowen just kind of pull his way into the end zone. And then on the ensuing PAT, Hawks comes off the corner and just cold cocks the holder, and they throw the flag. Now give him a chance to get it again. They need this one point, because then a field goal can win it for him. Roughing the kicker on the defense. We'll replay the try, untimed down. 30 to 27 is our score. Three point ball game, Highland leads it. That was the Grizzlies first score since pretty much early in the second period. This time the kick is up, it's good. And we have ourselves a two point ball game with 9.40 to go. 30 to 28, the Highland Rams lead the Skyline Grizzlies. And what a big boost that drive has to be for Skyline. Well, if you can't tell, we're kind of right in the middle of the Skyline turn section. <laughs> I, I, you know, I'm not a genius, but I figured that out all by myself. What was the first giveaway? Uh, the uh, possible the blue flags is what there you that go. tipped me off. Well, it's kind of fun because uh, they put us here right here in the stands tonight. So we're right down here amongst the, uh, the faithful. And they're having a good time. They're enjoying what they're seeing now because their team is right back in it at 30 to 28. And, folks, this is exactly the kind of ball game we thought we'd get. Yeah, I, I think it's coming in stages that we didn't really expect it to come, though. It was Skyline all the way for a while, quarter and a half. And then it was Highland for about two quarters, pretty much dominating the game. Now it looks like we might get into this cat and mouse back and forth kind of ball game we thought we'd see originally. And uh, Taylor Lugo's kind of picked up the pace on the rushing game for Skyline. 12 carries for 58 yards. Bowen, on the other hand, 14 carries for 55 yards. So 26 carries by the running backs for 113 yards. Kyle Kinghorn, number one, standing there, along with Ryan Kemp, to receive the kickoff here from Blake Jones. And Jones is going to Kinghorn. He'll take it at the four-yard line. He's got a wedge in front of him. And boy, does he go north and south. He just says, get out of my way. I'm a-coming. 
when he went right over the top of number 10 Bryce McBride the junior defensive back for Skyline watch this this guy gets ahead of steam and then once he realizes there's not a whole lot of room he says fine watch number 10 in white come into your screen right here he uh, kind of got bowled over there although he had a little little help from Kemp there occupying McBride before he got drilled you know he'll get credit for the tackle but that's about the only good thing about hey, that play. He used his friend to help the sidelines. <laughs> All right. Island with the ball. He got a first down and Tanner throwing 28 yard line. Tanner Harris back to pass over the middle. Acres got it. It's a foot race. Well, Acre didn't win the war there, but he sure won the battle. The foot race was won by Skyline, but the yardage war was won by Highland. Well, Scott Malcolm got beat, but he didn't get beat real deep. He was able to catch up to him. What a great throw there by Harris. Catches him right in stride. Just a little bit underthrown. But I think that the speed there by Malcolm would have caught him anyway. But what a great gainer. Acre has racked up some serious yardage tonight. Well, what that play does really, too, is just you got to deflate the momentum that Skyline had gotten from scoring. Harris again, rolling out to his right, looking to pass. There's a flag down. Proctor has it for an apparent completion, but we'll check the flag. I got your spot. I got your spot. Well, you get the spot, but then tell us about the flag. <laughs> <laughs> I love those sideline mics. Get all the action. Procedure against Highland. They'll bring it back. Well, I tell you, right now you take every break you can get. Formation on the offense, only six men on the line. Replay first down. And Acre Wayne, five catches. Check this: 183 yards in reception. That's not a bad. That's not bad per catch, not, huh? Not a bad. Not a bad day. <laughs> Man, he has just uh, you know beating people over the middle. All right, 9.06 to go in this ball game. It's a two-point game. Highland 30, Skyline 28. And the Rams right now get a first down and 15. Ball at the 31-yard line of the Grizzlies. Tanner Harris looking at the blitz. Here come the Grizz. They had a screen on. Let's see what happens. Ryan Kemp with it. Boy, sometimes the screen can beat the blitz. That time the Grizz did a good job to get to it. Well, it's, it's hard to run a screen when you're bringing nine guys because not all those nine are going to come up the middle. Some of them are coming off the corners, too, and when they see those backs start to slip out and the linemen start to slip out and give up on their blocks, hey, defensive guys are taught, you've got to stop and check screen. And that screen develops so deep because they force they forced Tanner Harris to go back so far that there's just no way a screen play like that's going to work. That's some great defensive rally to the ball. Second down and 17. The ball up to 33. Harris, the roll to the left, looking for Proctor. Has him for a gain of about eight. It'll be short of a first down. It'll bring up third down and about nine. Uh, there's a case, Wayne, of a right-handed quarterback sprinting out to his left and really have to get his feet set. He almost waits too long to throw this ball. Watch now, he has to get his feet set and squared up before he can deliver. And he catches Proctor just before he hits the sideline. Third down and nine. Ball sitting right at the 25 yard line. And again, Harris. And again, the blitz. Yep. Looking in the end zone for Proctor. Touchdown. Well, they got one-on-one -on -one coverage. And they went to him. Well, they brought him off the corner. They brought him up the middle. The blitz was on. I don't know if... Fred Cutter's listening into the on their headsets to see what kind of defenses they're calling. But it sure looks like it because he knows exactly what's coming and he's got the plays called to beat it. The kick is up. It's no good. Left. 
All of a sudden, we got an eight-point ball game. Hello. The extra point misses. Two of them tonight have really put the Highland Rams behind the eight ball, even though they've got the lead. Now, that, that swing of two points, when you have a two-point conversion available, certainly is, you know, it just keeps a lot of intrigue in the game. There's no doubt about that. Tanner Harris, Wayne, 19 for 24 for 348 yards. That touchdown strike to Proctor. A beautiful throw and catch and a beautiful call for his second touchdown pass. 8.04 to go in the ball game. 36-28. The Highland Rams on the far side celebrating their lead here at Milk Bowl 98, the A1 Division I championship game. Let's go down to Jeff Caves. I told you earlier in the game that Kellen Zollinger for Skyline had an injury at defensive back. Well, he was in on kickoff, but I have not seen him back on the defensive side. And who you have seen take his place is Scott Malcolm, number 37. And uh, Brent Cutter of Highland High School recognized it. And I think four times it went right after him and moved the ball all the way down the field. So we'll see if Zollinger can make it back for the next defensive possession for Skyline. Larry, Wayne? Yeah, that's pretty perceptive for a uh, you know an old defensive lineman to pick that one. You better believe it. I tell you what, Caves earning his money down there. Yeah, he is. All right, here we go. Ryan Keff getting ready to kick it off now. The Rams with an eight-point lead, and he kicks it off. Nobody's there. Goes into the end zone, and they'll have it at the 20-yard line. So nice little kick by Kemp. Well, that's that's one problem you have when you run that little tandem back situation where they stand together and wait for the ball to be kicked. You know, if you can drill one, you can get it into the end zone before they can get there. And Kemp's got enough leg to get that done. Well, that's like a bowling. You know, I get nine pins the first time, and there's only one pin there. There's you ever, you there ain't no way it? I'm going to hit yeah, it. Uh, I mean, I got too much room along, on either side of it. Do you bowl a lot? No. Okay. I just I came to my mind. Here we go. Lugo. Or, excuse me, that is Flint. Tim Flint has been the uh, mainstay here in this second half. Nice gain on first down. Well, not only do the three and seven look alike, but we keep ex expecting three to get the ball. Exactly. <laughs> it's not happening. <laughs> he so, gets the first down, so he gets 10 yards. We've got eight minutes left. We may get this figured out by the end of the game. They're just not going to give it to him. They're giving it to seven, 40, 34, and Lugo once in a while. Back to pass. Over the middle. Wide open is Adamson. That play worked for a touchdown earlier and has been open all night long. They have not been able to make the connection. Now, the unfortunate part of that is, if you're a Skyline fan, is if that pass is thrown properly, the receiver, Justin Franson, has got his DB beat. He's got five yards on him, but the ball's underthrown and thrown to the right, and he's got to stop and try to come back with the ball. If Sermon could somehow get that ball out there, that could be a touchdown. Now, what he's got to do is get some air underneath it and let the guy run for it. Here we go. The handoff to Lugo. That's trying to Lugo. get around the end. Hard to see. When he comes to the near side, the fan standing up. He goes underneath the stands. We'll check it out. Now, there's a player down on the sideline there, and that, and I hate to make conjecture here, but that is Lugo. Now, Lugo had been... Uh, Lipping a little bit here and there. Of course, you can see how much congestion there is on the sideline. In fact, the referee telling him to move some people back, get them off the sidelines. See if we can follow it, see what happens. Three men in the backfield, kind of similar to what uh, Highland ran down near the goal line. He bowing out there, leading the blocking. Just didn't get his uh, head in front. <laughs> that stiff arm uh, pretty much takes care of number one. And then you see the tackle down around the legs. We'll see if Jeff Caves can scout out uh, what the injury is to Lugo, and he, he doesn't look like he's feeling too good right now. Now Taylor Lugo, the offensive threat for the Skyline Grizzlies, being worked on on the sidelines. Meantime, 7.44 to go here in this ballgame. 36-28, Highland Rams lead it. A couple of missed extra points. Could play a, a big role in this game. Both mixed, missed kicks by Kemp. He's been fairly steady. I mean, he had that field goal that he drilled right down the middle, and then you miss a PAT. You, know, you have to wonder if the uh, snap was bad, the hole was bad. And in high school, they still use the T. When you put that T down, you know it's a very small area to set that ball on. 
All right, here we go. We're back to action now. Clint, right side. Not a whole lot there. Nice little defensive play. Well, a host of Highland players in on this tackle. Did you see the penetration there again? By Danny Frazier, really creates the havoc in the backfield that makes the back cut before he's ready to do so. Skyline going for it on fourth down and two at their own 38-yard line. Handoff up the middle. And he got I, it. He's going to be real close to see where they mark it. He needed to get right to the 40. Now they're marking does. it over the 40, yep. so he, he, he just barely made it, though. You know, it's a right foot, not a left foot, but he's made enough of it so that a right foot works for him this time. Well, that big bull with the ball, and he gets in behind Flint, and Flint almost gets in his way. <laughs> well, maybe they should just let the big guy go by himself. Well, he had, he had to run over his own guy to get there, too. Certainly a gutsy call that time by Dale Guilford, head coach of Skyline. Sermon looking. His man fell down. He wanted to go over the middle. He fell down, and he had to go underneath to Flint. Boy. Five he, black shirts within about a 10-yard uh, radius there, Wayne. That's a dangerous throw. Well, the guy he wanted to go to, and I can't remember which receiver it was, fell down. It was 84 miles. Yep. And then he's kind of like in a world of hurt because... <laughs> well, that screws up the timing for everything. I can guarantee you Miles and Flynn are not supposed to be within three right. yards of each other. I would su suspect that Miles is supposed to be probably 10 yards down the field, so you've got three spaced receivers to take your pickup. Looks like an end around. Nice little play here coming to the left by Nick Adamson. Adamson gets near midfield. That would be close to another first down. Mark it at the 49, just shy of a first down. It'll be third down and a yard and a half. Almost a 10-yard gain on that, and you see again, Frazier, with the penetration in the backfield, almost makes that a disastrous play for Skyline. But Adamson able to keep his feet and pick up nine and a half yards. Third down and a half a yard. Now that quick count, well, yep. you got to get down and ready as a D lineman. They've been doing it every play. I mean, every play they come up and go on the first count. you got to be ready as a D-line. Well, especially when you're looking at third and about a foot. You know they're going to come up there and just probably QB sneak it or do something like that. They did. They get the first down. And this drive stays alive. A gutsy fourth down call. And it's kind of demoralizing for the defense because they just went on fourth down. It's third and a half a foot. You know they're going to go two times. So it's, it's kind of a defeatist attitude. Sermon got blindsided, completes the ball for no gain. Great tackle out on the corner by Tommy Stoddard for Highland. He wraps up Greg Baird. Watch Sermon take a hit here from Fraser. He takes it right in the back. Stoddard with a great tackle to keep him to only a one-yard gain. All right, second down and nine. 5.42 to go in the ball game. Sermon, the throw. Complete to Bowen. First down. Nice pass. Bone was surrounded by black jerseys, but he was able to make the catch because the ball was thrown perfectly. And now it's Sermon who's been taking a little bit of heat and a little pressure and a few licks here in the second half, but enough composure. He knows he's going to get hit, but he still gets the ball out to Bowen. First down. Oh, handoff to Flint deep in the backfield. He does not get back to the line of scrimmage. That was almost danger right there. Uh, that was not designed to be a toss play, Wayne, no. but it ended up being a toss play. <laughs> yeah, it's called ad living. Yeah, it's called, you know, not wanting to lose five yards and getting the ball to your tailback. He still ended up losing two. Yeah, the 4-6 the handoff became the 4-6 toss. All right, second down and 11. Handoff up the middle to Bowen. And Bowen bowls his way for five. Clock running, 4.45 to go in the ball game. It's an eight-point game. Remember that skyline with a touchdown and a two-point extra point can tie this thing up. Another good hit there by Tommy Stoddard. Third down, seven yards to go. Sermon. Look rush. out. Yep. Frazier. Frazier's down. 
going to touch that. But... <laughs> yeah. Oh, he came from the blind side, and Sermon had no time. And I, I think the Sermon may uh, have a little Sermon with those offensive linemen that let three guys come in and just cream him. Maybe time for a Sermon. Danny Frazier, he's been all over in the second half. Very mobile guy. He's really been a deep in the backfield a lot of times in this second half. And that uh, is going to force yeah. the punt by Skyline. Meanwhile, and, the clock ticks off. Yes, it does. And really force what's been a, a pretty good game here by the all-purpose guy for Skyline, which has been Bowen. Yep, delay a game. 15 rushes for 60 yards for Bowen and four catches for 50 yards. So he's Mr. All-Purpose. Delay of game on the offense. Still fourth down. Now they're signaling for a timeout. Out. And I don't, I'm not, not sure why. Problem. I mean, they stopped the clock anyway. Well, what happened was Sermon that time tried to take a timeout to avoid the delay of game. He didn't really realize that the delay of game had just been called. The flag had just been thrown. And so they're trying to decide. Now, the official had given them their option. Do you want to take it? Skyline. Okay, so they're going to take it with 3.41 to go in the ball game and down by eight. Now, this may be good. They can sit there and talk about, do we want to chant something? Do we want to try a fake, even though we, we're going to have fourth and very long? You know, well, their defense hasn't done a great job at stopping Island in this second half. They've only done it really one time. So I think uh, maybe a small lack of confidence in this skyline defense. But hey, they're tired, man. They've been out on this field a lot tonight. And uh, maybe a fake is in here, but I, with 340 left, uh, I, I just, I can't see it, Wayne. Well, I, I think you probably do have to sit down your defense and say, look, guys, we're going to punt it away. you got to get the ball back for us. If we can get it back, we'll have a shot to tie this game up and go into overtime. We will see what happens. You know what really bothers me when I said Frazier down? You know, there's probably half the people watching us today have no idea what I'm talking about. When I said Frazier goes down. Have no idea. Um, uh, we probably won't explain it tonight either. But no, so. we gotta explain it. If they don't know if they... All right, let's see what Skyline decides to do. Yeah, they're going to go for it. At least they're going to line up in that way. Fourth down now. Sermon back, looking, throwing, incomplete. Nice play by Jared Carlson. The ball intended for Greg Beard, and Carlson was there on a fourth down play. And I'll tell you, it's a good thing Carlson was there because that was a pretty good play. Yeah, it was a very nice play play that had developed the receiver went up for the ball but Carlson makes a great adjustment and he's not a big guy by any stretch of the imagination at five foot eight but he got up there to break up that pass and I'll tell you if, if coach Guilford didn't have a lot of confidence in his defense he's putting him in a heck of a tough position right here so you saw Carlson go in France in number 80 the wide receiver who broke to the inside which was supposed to free up Baird but uh, Carlson made like you said a great adjustment to come back so the Highland Rams now trying to run this clock out, run this game in, and go into a championship. Ryan Kemp right up the middle. The timeout situation is one per club. It looks like Skyline's going to burn that last one. That was a costly timeout a few moments ago when they decided to punt or go for the fourth down. See, I think I would have punted the ball kept the timeout, have two timeouts left to see if you can get a short field going somehow, fumble recovery, because you know the Rams are going to try to run it out a little bit. But now you got to go with what got you here. If yeah, you have absolutely. no more timeouts, 320 to go in the ball game, and you know what Highland's going to do. They're going to keep it on the ground. They yeah. need one first down. Absolutely, and that what-if game's tough to play. But, uh, hey, if the if kid comes up with the catch there and... Carlson doesn't make that great play to break up the pass. Then we're applauding everybody on Skyline side saying, what a great idea. All right, let's go down the sidelines now. Jeff Caves, what do you got for us? Well, it's hard to hear down here. We're right in the middle of the Skyline band. And I don't know whether you guys were able to notice that during that last drive, the outstanding halfback, Taylor Lugo, was not in. He sprained his left ankle. They tried to retape it. He couldn't go. It doesn't look like he'll be back in the game if they do get the ball back, guys. All right, thank you, Jeff. Appreciate it. Yeah, we noticed he was down there for a while. And, and that's a tough break for the Skyline Grizzlies. Some of the Skyline fans here 
look up and they see no timeouts. They know what Skyline, they know what Highland's going to do. They got second down and six. I think you're going to see a good dose of Ryan Kemp here, who's got 94 yards on 16 carries, now 17. Ryan Kemp gets it out to the 45-yard line. Clock with his tick away here. The final minutes of this ball game. Highland, a third down and two. They make the first down. This ball game is history. They will just kneel on it from there on out. Grizzlies cannot stop the clock. And Skyline got lucky there. Uh, one of the coaches from Skyline went out on the field and asked for a timeout. He was signaling timeout, and one of the side judges came over and said, Coach, you don't have any timeouts left. So it saved him a penalty right there anyway. Well, it's tough to see. You're a coach. You, you just want to be able to do something, and it's so it's such a helpless feeling when the clock's running down. You can do nothing about it. 239 and counting. One thing they can do is stop him from getting this first down. And I did not do it. Ryan Kemp gets the first down, or well, very close to it. Let's see where they mark it. Interesting spot. I can't see exactly where the, uh, I think he got it by yeah, half a ball. So do I. First down, and that's going to pretty much do it for the Highland Rams here tonight. They will take a knee. Clock starts, two minutes, 30 seconds to go. Been a good game. 36-28 is our score. The Highland Rams lead it. They were down 21-0, came roaring back. And I'm not sure they'll, they're, yeah, they're not going to kneel on it yet, but they're close to that territory. They will take their time. Ooh. Over the top. Why do you do that? Because, <laughs> man, that's the only way that kid knows how to run, Wayne. You bet. He's, he's 100 miles an hour all the time. He, he doesn't know how to go 20. Oh, you get, you get airborne like that, you can get hurt. Watch him. Hey, man, this is this kid's last game in high school. He's going to make it count. Wow. He thinks he's going to win a state championship. He's flying through the air, man. He's Superman. You can't hurt Superman. Hey, he feels, one of those guys has kryptonite out there. Yeah, he feels like Superman right now. The clock continues to tick away. A minute 35. I suppose if he fumbled, he wouldn't feel much like Superman, but... Kemp. See how he doesn't lose his footing? Gets a couple of yards. Looks like he was going to go down. Now, I'd love to see this guy in some agility drills. Would you like to see this guy do some of these tests to see, you know, how quick he can run an obstacle course and cones and things like that? This kid has got the quickest feet I've seen in a long time. Well, we've had a good game here tonight. We're coming up on a minute to play in a ball game. Third down and six for the Hanna Rams. They will take all of the play clock down before they snap the ball. 59 seconds to go in the season. And Ohio Rams look like they're going to win their 24th consecutive game. End up 47-1 and one under Brent Cutter. Kemp up the middle. He's got 100 yards rushing now, and that last little squirt may have given him the first down. Now they can do the kneel down thing. Yep. This baby's over. And I tell you, Skyline doesn't have anything to feel bad about. They came in here as the underdog. They played a heck of a ball game. They came out and they laid the wood to Highland for a quarter and a half. But I tell you, this Highland offense just wore them down finally. And it took its toll, and these kids played their hearts out. But they're not, the white shirts are not going to get it done today, but they had nothing to hang their head about, Wayne. Okay, here's your kneel-down offense right now. What you like to see if you're a Highland Ram fan, the kneel-down offense. The Rams are going to win this thing. That's it. They don't need to snap it again. It's a done deal. The clock will run down. The Highland Rams will be your 1998 Milk Bowl champions of A1 Division I. 36-28, your final score. I'm not sure there's anything more fun that could happen to us. To a high school. I mean, this is the this is the pinnacle right here. Well, it started back in the middle of August with double days. A lot of these guys working out over the summer, doing conditioning drills, passing drills on their own. It's a long season, Wayne, and when you cap it off with the state championship and win the Milk Bowl. It doesn't get any better than that.
Well, the Hanna Rams tonight down 21 to nothing in this ball game came roaring back. Took the lead, held on to the lead. It was still a two-point game at 30 to 28. And then they just uh, tacked that last one on for the for the win here tonight. So the Highland Rams have been a dominant team. They go undefeated 12-0. They've won 24 straight games. As we mentioned, haven't lost since the 1996 championship game against Centennial. And we'll finish up at 40 seven and one under Brent Cutter. That's How about amazing. That? That, is, that is incredible. And I'll tell you, the uh, this team came in here tonight. Highland got smacked in the mouth pretty good by Skyline at the start of this game. Highland down 21 zip. And it looked like Skyline was just going to blow this thing wide open. But Highland showed the champions that they are by coming back and getting seven on the board, 14 by halftime, and then just coming out and dominating the third quarter. All right, let's go down to Jeff Cave now, who's on the sideline. Jeffrey? Okay, Coach, you've got to get on to accept some more awards. How do you describe how you feel right now? I don't even know. I don't even know if I can describe it. I don't, lost between wanting to start to cry and being so happy for what these guys pulled off. You know, it's, it's been quite a run. As you look at the first half, do you see any keys? You didn't throw the long ball as much. Maybe you went to the run more and underneath. Well, we tried to throw the long ball. We just didn't hold protection up. Tanner really held onto the ball too long. And uh, we just talked about getting guys settled down, and he had to get the ball off sooner, and we figured we could beat him in the secondary. Everybody's anxious to know your future. Have we seen you coach your last game for Highland High School tonight? I really don't know. I'm going to take some time. You know, the best thing I can tell everyone is we're gonna, I'm going to take a few months and, and just see. And, uh, you know, I got some other irons in the fire, and I got to see what's going to work out best for me and my family. Congratulations on another Milk Bowl championship. Well deserved, Brent. Thank you, Jeff. Brent Cutter, 1998 Milk Bowl champions, Wayne and Larry. All right, thank you. Champions again, as the PA announcer says here, huh? Yes, they are. Here's the trophy presentation. Yeah, they finished with 411 total yards in offense tonight. Ryan Kemp, 21 carries, 110 yards, and one touchdown. Tanner Harris, a great night passing, 18 of 22 for 337 yards and two touchdowns. Now, that's just an incredible night, Wayne. Uh, he's going to remember this for a long time. You mentioned T.J. Acree, five receptions for 181 yards and a touchdown. How about Griffin Proctor? Seven receptions, 111 yards and a touchdown as well. Incredible two and a half quarters for the receiving crew for Highland. The first quarter and a half, they were non-existent, Wayne. They didn't catch a pass until halfway through the second quarter. And yet they can rack up those kind of numbers in two and a half quarters is really phenomenal. And a testament to Brett Cutter's offensive coordination abilities and what he's done with these skill guys for the Highland Rams. Now that picture pretty much says it all. We are the champions for 1998. Turn it they get a banner, they get a trophy, and they get some time to celebrate in midfield. Yeah, they don't even have to go to school tomorrow. How about that? All right. I'll tell you what, we're going to be back here. We'll uh, kind of recap this game, talk a little bit more about it. We will be back right after this. And welcome back to Hold Arena, everybody. Wayne DeZue back, Larry Pulowski with you. Again, the final score, the Highland Rams win it. 36 to 28 over the Skyline Grizzlies to win the A1 Division I Championship. Right now, we're going to go to Jeff Caves, who has a special guest, Griffin Proctor. Jeff, seven catches tonight for Griffin, 111 yards and one touchdown. Take it away. Well, Griffin, uh, we just learned seven catches, 111 yards. You know you got the one touchdown. Senior year for you, what a way to go out. Oh, yeah, this is a dream way to go out. It's 24 and 0 for us, two, two years stay. That doesn't happen very often. And Great, never felt so good. Now that you know the outcome, at what point in the first half when you were down three love, 21 zip, did you think, well, maybe this isn't our year? Yeah, I was getting a little scared. That's what happened two years ago. We came in the favorite and got blown out of our own building. I knew if we just stayed disciplined and 
came back and used our game plan. The coaches were calling great plays. We just weren't executing very well in the first half. Started executing a little bit better, and things came around, scored some points. Did you uh, notice any change when you made the uh, catches here in the fourth quarter on the coverage? I think they had another guy on you. Did that make a difference? They sure went to you a lot. Yeah, um, we were calling pretty much. We were running the same base plays all night. Coach Cutter's calling great plays, and Tanner's putting the ball on the money. It's, it's hard to screw up. I think they were trying to do something different in the fourth quarter, but... They probably weren't used to doing it, but they played great all night. you got to give them all the credit. It was a great game. With the future of uh, high school football in this area about to change, there's going to be three high schools coming in, as I understand it. There'll be a Division II school, though, and yeah. the two big schools will probably stay just a little larger. What do you think the future is for Southeastern Idaho football's dominance across the state? Well, I think as long as you've got the cutters coaching around here, it's going to be a pretty great future for as long as they're here. But other than that, I'm not sure. Kind of, I'm kind of glad I'm getting out of that before the school split, but should stay the same pretty much, I think. You expect uh, Brent Cutter to come back next year? I hope for the sake of the juniors and sophomores. He's, uh, he's a great coach. It's been a great experience playing under him for three years. Well, tremendous effort. Congratulations on your Milk Bowl championship, and now you get to take a couple of weeks off and rest up, right? No, I got basketball Monday. Get the weekend off. <laughs> <laughs> All right, congratulations Thanks once again. Well, this guy gets the weekend off. He goes back to work Monday. United Dairymen of Idaho make it possible for us to sit out here and call this work. What a great football game. And Skyline left it all on the field. Uh, just a tremendous effort from those kids. And you can tell from uh, the Highland kids, there's such a sense of relief, I think. Uh, what a tremendous joy they've had. And I, I think in talking to Brent Cutter's father before the game, he's done. He he'll go into stockbroking and I don't think you'll see him coach much, if any. His brother Dirk said he didn't think he'd probably continue in coaching. So from my perspective, uh, that's what will happen with Brent Cutter. What a fabulous family. Uh, Wayne and uh, Larry, a great broadcast. Well, thank you, Jeff. Appreciate all your work on the sideline. Uh, Griffin Proctor, very well-spoken young man. And uh, he's got to get to basketball practice now. How's that for focus? And I'll tell you what, he uh, had a good point. If there's a Cutter coach in this program, they're going to be in good shape no matter how many high schools they put in this town. 24 and 0 run wayne just think about that 24 and 0 i mean of all the things that can happen to a football team injuries you go on the road in hostile environments weather i mean the the possibilities are endless on ways you can lose a game but they come back and this guy right here tanner harris had a great night proctor had a great night harris 18 of 22 for 337 yards and two touchdowns and acre my goodness T.J. Akery, five catches for 181 yards. What a night that young man had. He will never forget this night, Wayne. Well, and I think all of it changed when they started to take uh, Tanner Harris and sprint him right, sprint him left, because when he was just taking his five-step drops backwards, uh, Skyline was getting to him. After that, the blitz became ineffective, and when you're blitzing so much, all of a sudden somebody's got to be open, and we saw that T.J. Akery, not very often, folks, do you average better than 30 yards per catch and that's exactly what T.J. Akery did here tonight. So just a great game. And, you know, Jordan Sermon didn't have a bad game passing for Skyline. 10 of 21 for 105 yards and a couple of touchdowns. Heath Bowen had four receptions for 50 yards. Taylor Lugo, three receptions. Lugo tonight held to 54 yards rushing on 12 carries. Uh, he only averaged 4.5 carries. So Rudy Highland did a good job to shut them down. Heath Bowen had 17 carries for 63 yards. So, uh, you know, he had a pretty good night. 411 total yards for the uh, Highland Rams here tonight in this ballgame. You know, we said it before the game, before the final uh, ticks came off the clock, that this Skyline team played their hearts out. And Caves made a good point. These guys left it all on the field. They have nothing to hang their head about. They came in here as an underdog. They played like champions. They lost by eight points. And I'll tell you what, in the state championship finals of the Milk Bowl, that is nothing to hang your head about, Wayne. No, not at all. And you just saw Ryan Kemp go in. For a touchdown, he had 21 carries, 110 yards. Some of the fans still hanging around here, not willing to take off, go home, because they just want to savor this moment. Again, we'd like to thank the uh, stations that carried this tonight. KBCI Television in Boise, Jeff Anderson, General Manager. Uh, Jim Coots, Coons over in Idaho Falls at KIDK, GM there. And Lee Wagner at KMVT. Thanks, gentlemen, for letting us bring this to you. And thanks to the United Dairymen for providing the funding for this event. This is not a cheap thing to do, Wayno. It's very expensive to put live sports on television, and the dairyman uh, ante up some serious money, not only for the high schools, but also for the enjoyment of the fans to be able to watch a game like this. And we're going to be doing uh, more than this. We'll have uh, girls basketball state finals for A1s and A2s on February 20th. And on March 6th, 
you can look for the boys A1 and A2 Real Dairy Shootout state championships to happen uh, from the Idaho Center over in Napa. So lots of great basketball headed your way over the winter and springtime. All right, I'll tell you what, guys, we had a lot of fun tonight. Again, the final, yes, indeed, the Rams do it again. 36 to 28, your final. Behind the Rams have won 24 in a row, 47 and one under Brent Cutter, and they are the champions for 1998. For Jeff Caves, who are our, our sideline reports today, for Larry Pulowski, I'm Wayne Zubak. Thanks for joining us here in Pocatello. Good night, everybody.